Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, I seem to have a small issue, chat. Apparently fighting Markov for like three months straight was such ridiculous damage on my controller that uh, the joystick is now starting to fall apart. <laughs> like the little ring around like the main pad of the stick is now just completely loose. Oh, yep, there it goes. Ooh, that's uh, funny looking. Actually, I kind of like that. Okay, enough fiddling with the options. Hi! Welcome back to Ace Attorney. We didn't lose the save this time! Thank God! Holy shit. That would have been a disaster. Uh, I, I apologize in advance, chat. This this may be a little bit of a more low-energy day. I've been up since 4 in the morning. That was five hours ago now. It's, ugh. I cannot brain. I had to stay up late, like, gathering stuff in Okami 2 for, like, the promises I have for stream. And then I have the rest of the week to grind Octopath, because I'm pretty sure we're in a decent place for Dragon Quest. Ugh. And it's like, oh my god, dude, the, the reason I woke up at four in the morning, I had the single most horrifying nightmare I have ever had in my life. You don't even know. <laughs> like, all I remember, actually, I remember a lot about it, which is why I was so fucking terrified and couldn't get back to sleep. There's like this weird existential creature who doesn't, like, fully exist. It is mostly invisible, and you cannot touch it, but it can touch you and do anything it wants to. All you can see is this, like, three-dimensional bit of fluff that kind of looks like like, realistic TV static. Just, like, on some random part of its body. The body of which is colossal and amorphous. And this thing moves disturbingly fast. This motherfucker can skedaddle. I don't know how I knew this, if it's invisible, mostly, but I do know that it had, like, 12 sets of absurdly long arms that it uses to, like, skitter around, all of which end with a human hand, all of which are invisible. Spare, like, maybe some amorphous head. And this thing, you ever seen, like, I've never watched Neon Genesis Evangelion. But there's one creature in it called Ramiel, who has this, like, haunting scream. The moment this thing sees you, it screamed like that. And you could just, like, you can't see it move. But you could see, like, the scrapes of the, on the floor of it crawling after you. And it was the most terrifying shit. And I remember, if it grabbed you, it would just, like, assimilate you. And it would briefly turn into whoever it assimilated, and it would have a brief look of peace before the scream began again and it returned to its form. So I can only assume everything it catches is in constant pain. It was the most horrific shit. Oh, so yeah, I've, I've been up for hours because of that. What about it? Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, it's turning. <laughs> Hold on, let me set this projector up correctly. Let's see, am I forgetting anything? I sent the thing to, to Twitter. Got yeah, the projector. Microphone is on. Audio is fine. Game's up. People can see it. We're live. Let's do it. Hmm. Also, don't mind me. I just had a granola bar. So good. What the? I don't know why these are so unbelievably good, but geez. March twenty second, two fourteen p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number Three. Where were we? What? What happened last time? Ah, that's right. We're trying to pin it on Adrian so we can get Maya back. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a weird day. She's her manager. It would have been very easy for her to pull this off. Oh, right, I forgot this guy to read this guy's line in the proper server voice. Hold on. What? No way. Not cool and collected, Adrian Andrews. Is that what it said? I don't remember. 
the only person who had easy access to the knife you used at dinner was, well, her. So after the ceremony, during the break, huh? I was sleeping like a log the entire time. See? She could have also easily planted that blood-covered button in your comma. Mmm, because she was the one that came to wake me up. Then, dude, you're saying it really was her? Yes, she is the real killer. She was the one who murdered Juan Corda. But why? I thought she was buds with Juan. She has her own agenda. Her own agenda? What are you talking about? Is it the gay agenda? <laughs> One canon lesbian! Yeah! <laughs> I'm sure you'll see by the time this trial's over. It'll be alright. I'll get you acquitted by the end of today. Get me a verdict that's refreshing like a spring breeze, okay, Mr. Lawyer Dude? Phoenix. I think her motives related to Celeste impacts his missing suicide note, right? Yes. Miss Andrews depended on Miss Impacts as her strength and reason to live. But then Miss Impacts suddenly killed herself. It sounds like she left a suicide note, and the person thought to have hidden it is Juan Corda, the victim of this murder. And that's why I think that Miss Andrews got close to Mr. Corda. All to get the suicide note back. That sounds plausible, but one thing bothers me. Um, what? Who was it that first told us about the relationship? Better state Miss Andrews' dependency issues with regards to Miss Impacts? Edgeworth, he knows. He's going to have a strategy around that fuck. It looks like he's still the one in command of this ship. Don't let your guard down yet. Hmm. March 22nd, 2.25 p.m. That's right, because we have to get this done today. Otherwise... Court will now reconvene. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you please. The prosecution calls the witness subpoenaed by this court. It's Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Mr. Juan Corda's room. Nice card. What is your occupation? I am the manager of the defendant in this case, Mr. Matt Ongard. I see. Now then. Before we begin, Your Honor, I have one request. Don't find me guilty. Uh, yes, sure. What is it? I'm sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing. I would love to find out more about my relationship with the victim. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. Ah, uh, no, I have no idea what you mean. I've never even heard of Gossip Land. I'm not stealing the youth from people. Fuck off! He just starts frothing at the mouth. If the judge was ever a prosecution witness, he'd do all my work for me. <laughs> anyway, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relation to the victim. Yes, I was seeing Mr. Corrida. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and Juan. But this was a private matter between Juan and myself. Hmm. So it was a fry and bait matter. What's that bait and fry? Reminds me of fishing. I... I didn't kill him. No one is accusing you of that. I am. I think there's someone who would beg to differ. Oh, uh, fuck. I think we all understand your relationship with the victim now, Miss Andrews. Very well, then. Witness, please testify to the court about what happened when you discovered the murder that had taken place. This is such an amazing change of pace from the slow-paced text in Okami. Oh my god. When I found the body, by Adrian Andrews, <laughs> it was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. <laughs> trying to think of like a fucking doctor. I heard a single gunshot, a little sound, like boom. <laughs> yeah, Miss Andrews, the victim was stabbed. Shut up. <laughs> After that, I went to Juan's room, and there was his dead body. I, I was in shock. What I saw was naturally the exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. Oh, you're gonna regret that phrasing. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. 
You poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes. Sadly, I didn't remember not to touch things at the scene of the crime. And I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that is when the fingerprints on the lime glass were made, Your Honor. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Phoenix. She's one cool and collected customer, and she has the brains to match. Yeah, I know. She's actually very good-looking. Mia, you are in the body of an eight-year-old. Control yourself. <laughs> in order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head-on confrontations. You should disrupt her pacing. Disrupt her pacing? She's the type of woman who is easily thrown off by things inconsistent with her thinking, so you have to attack when she least expects it. The instant you let up on your offense is the instant this trial is over. Understand? So press, press, and press again. Uh, move that mouse away from the close button. Thank you. Okay. What was Mr. Ongar doing at the time? He was taking a nap. He was worn out from his mini performance as the Nickel Samurai during the ceremony. Hmm. Mr. Ongar did say he was taking a nap. I guess you could say it could not have been taken out of his room. Yes? Excuse me? It? What are you? Right? I thought the years of school would have taught you how to construct a sentence. If you can't make a sensible sentence with a subject, then I'll make one for you. Watch! Did you, Miss Andrews, remove Mr. Ongard's knife from his room? No. Hmm. Subject, verb, object, right? Did you skip basic grammar? Quick, get that down! <laughs> I sure as hell did, jeez. <laughs> That's it. Phoenix has not a word in response. <laughs> After that, I went to Juan's room. There was his- oh right, press. And why'd you do that? As a friendly gesture, Juan was to make an appearance with the other heroes. So the show was supposed to be a show of friendship, huh? Tell me more. Is that the only reason? I beg your pardon? What are you implying? You just confessed to being in a relationship with him. You had a certain goal in mind when you started to get close to him, correct? So perhaps you had a more personal matter to discuss with the victim. Sorry, but I didn't have any such intentions in mind at the time. I can't get her to talk without a strong piece of evidence, I guess. May we continue now? Witness, what did you see when you got to his room? You were in shock. Yes. By the electrical fencing around the room. I don't know where some of these bits are going anymore. What? Was I not supposed to be? Can you not tell how shocked I am by my incredibly calm smile? Miss Andrews is a very calculating person. Despite how close they were, I doubt she had romantic feelings for Mr. Corridor. Anyone randomly stumbling upon a dead body would be in shock. Phoenix, you fucking idiot. You can't seriously expect that a young beauty like her would not be shocked. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? I don't know. Do I look like I care about women? I'm just trying to get Phoenix to love me again. <laughs> Somehow I don't think beauty has anything to do with being shocked or not. Based. Hmm, I see. That's a large ceiling fan we have there. <laughs> Naturally, the exact same scene is in the crime scene photo. That is incredibly specific. I'm almost tempted to immediately present the photo. This is the photo you're referring to, correct? Yes, the one with the knife lodged in his chest. And the guitar case was like this too? Yes, it was open and empty, of course. And then, what did you do next, witness? I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. Juice? Yes, there was a bottle of tomato juice on the table, so I helped myself. God, how does anyone stomach that stuff? Ugh. But you didn't drink any of it, did you? Huh? There were no lip marks left on this wine glass, it's just that anyone drank from it. I... I wasn't feeling terribly great, so I set the glass down without drinking it. Yeah, you know what, I suppose... Trying to drink a red substance in front of a dead body may not be the best idea. <laughs> Miss Andrews, I'd like to confirm with you one more time. When you discovered the dead body of Juan Corda, you were in great shock. 
And that's when you poured yourself a glass of juice, correct? And what of it? Are you alright, Phoenix? This is incredibly odd questioning, even for you. My mind really was complete blank at the time. Your mind is complete blank? I didn't think that was possible for you. You're so smart and awesome! Aren't you rude today? I just complimented you, lady! I was so dazed that I made one careless mistake. That one thing. What one thing? Um, never mind. It's no big deal. It's a murder case, Adrian! <laughs> Was she starting to say just now? Miss Andrews, I'm convinced that as you said, you made a mistake at the scene of the crime. What I really want to know is what this mistake was. Actually, so would I. I I'm sorry, it's just... it's kind of embarrassing. When I, when I set the glass down on the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower vase over. Oh? Look at that pose. Flower vase? Are you talking about the one on the floor in the crime photo? Wait a minute. This mess of glass shards? It was originally on top of the dresser, but when I bumped into it with my, with my elbow, it fell onto the guitar case. Aha! It would have been inside the case if it was open, so at the time it was closed, which means somebody fucking opened it. Why did you withhold such an important piece of information? I'm sorry. I thought that since the crime scene was already in disarray, the people would simply assume the vase was just another part of the mess. It looks like yet another fact has come to light here. Please add this and anything else you have to reveal to your testimony. I'm sorry, but I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. Top of the lid. But in the picture. That's a lot of photo. There we go. In the picture, it's open and perfectly dry. Which means she must have opened it. So I either have to present the picture or the case. I'm gonna go with the case, because that feels like it makes more sense. Objection! There we go. You testified that you knocked the flower vase over. Is this correct? Yes. And are you sure it fell onto the guitar case? Is there some problem with what I said? It's not some problem. It's a major problem. It's true that the top of the guitar case was wet with water. However, that's exactly what is so strange. Guitar cases aren't supposed to be wet. Miss Andrews! You testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case. However... If that was true, the case should have gotten wet on the inside, not the outside. Is that like a purse or something in her hand? It doesn't look like the card. It's my brick meant for beating pieces of shit into place. Ah, good, another reason to think she's cool. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I just really like Adrian. I think she's awesome. But that's very true! Furthermore, there's one other strange thing about this guitar case. The fact that there's no guitar in it. And what is that? <laughs> sorry, just... He's like... Googly eye. Ugh, sorry. Jeez. <laughs> His, like, googly-eyed expression always gets me. Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. The remains of the vase are scattered on the floor. And what is wrong with that? The guitar case was open when the vase fell. The glass shard should be inside, not outside the case. Oh. What is your point, right? That the case was closed at the time the vase was knocked over. Yeah, why would... She got something out of the case. Is that all? No. Think back to what Miss Andrews testified to. She said that other than the vase, she didn't touch anything else. <clears throat> yes, that's right. She did implicitly say she didn't touch the guitar case. But, but this whole matter with the guitar case is a dead end. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. It has no bearing on this case at all. Okay, well, if the guitar case was left behind, then why did he bring... 
If the guitar was left behind, why did you bring the case unless there was something inside it? Edgeworth, you're smarter than this. That may very well be. However, his fucking Astro Boy looking ass smile. Ugh, the empty guitar case does seem to have no relation to this case, doesn't it? Hmm. It seems that there is no deeper meaning to the guitar case. Well, Mr. Wright, do you think we need to hear more details about the guitar case? Make her testify! We want the truth! The empty guitar case? I believe this is a crucial piece of the, of the puzzle, even though I have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> I can't believe anyone would reach for straws like this, but it is you. I can't believe I'm doing this either. <laughs> Even they are just like, yeah, this is a bit of a stretch. And Phoenix has brought a parrot into court before, so you know things are looking rough. Alright, I'll follow along with you. For now. But watch out, when your back is turned, I'll drain the life right out of you! Miss Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honor. I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. It's not a big deal though, right? The case is empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Is that right? Hmm. Hmm. Looks like this really wasn't a very important point. Why on earth would she open the case? What, what possible reason? This wastefulness is such a familiar feeling by now that it's almost comforting. As comfortable as your arms, Phoenix. Fuck off, Edgeworth! <laughs> I'm still mad at you. <laughs> Using any way to change the topic. Convenient escape for a weak man. <laughs> Phoenix is absolutely a bottom. <laughs> I've never said any words like that in my life, but I've also never been so sure. <laughs> All right, let's keep pressing. <laughs> During your testimony just now, did you remember those events clearly in your mind? Well, you see... Are you sure you're the one who opened the guitar case? She's... she's waiting for someone to tell her if she should answer or not. Oh, this poor fucking woman. Well, Miss Andrews? Y yes, it was me. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. So, you opened the guitar case, then? Yes, well, maybe. Why did you open the guitar case? Huh? Mr. Corda's dead body was right there in front of you, wasn't it? I wouldn't think that the first thing you would do is call for help. Or I would think that the first thing you would do is call for help, not open a guitar case. As the witness has said multiple times, when she found the dead body, she was dazed. Hmm. Maybe I... Maybe I was curious to know if the bright red guitar was alright or not. I thought maybe the criminal took it. That's actually a decently valid reason. It's probably like... If it was a crazed fan, that would probably be the first thing they do after killing him. But getting back on topic... Was it really empty? Question mark? I was just wondering if maybe when you opened the case, the guitar was still inside. Phoenix fucking Wright. How long have you been a lawyer, Mr. Wright? <laughs> have a little professionalism. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. These trials will be over in half the time if you would just pay attention. Yes, pay more attention, Mr. Nick. That's not my name, Your Honor. Yeah, I, I know that. <laughs> Sorry. That's why I opened the case even I don't know. Do you? Do you not? Is that because you were shocked in days of discovering the victim's body? Yes, that's probably it. I'm not going to get anywhere if I continue pressing her like this. The only way to make her talk was with evidence. I guess I should give it a try. Yeah, if you had a weapon to hit her with. 
the uh, phrasing, Phoenix. <laughs> I'm sure a weapon is hiding somewhere in the court record waiting to be found. You mean this thing? <laughs> you sure you want me to hit her with this, Nia? That, that might not be best for us. Do it, Phoenix! <laughs> So they definitely want us to press on this one. I open the case, even I don't know. We have any evidence of the missing suicide note? Possibly this. Let me check the crime scene. Hmm. We definitely have proof that whoever this is is shorter than Matt on guard, so we know for a fact it couldn't have been him. I think this is it, but it also feels like a bit of a stretch. Objection! Yep, too early. <sighs> Should probably save before I lose any more. <sighs> Scoozy. Case is empty after all. Hmm, why do you remember that? Unless you were specifically checking it. Only on top of the lid bears Corda's fingerprints. Interestingly enough, there... don't seem to be any of hers. Your Honor, Maya's been kidnapped! <laughs> if I showed this, would he just, like, instantly kill her? That'd be a pretty cool detail. But I'm also not gonna mess- Actually, you know what? I just saved. I'm gonna save again, just in case. What happens if I present this? Okay. It's just a failed one. That would've been cool, though. <laughs> like, I can't take it anymore! Your Honor! Maya's been kidnapped! You shouldn't have done that, Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Nick! Pow! Hmm. the Nickel Samurai. What have we covered in this case? We covered the photos, we covered who the person was and the existence of the relationship between Adrian and Juan. Hmm. Strangled with a scarf, then stabbed with a knife. That's such an odd detail. I don't think that ever comes back in the case. Hmm. Car case after I knocked the base over. She mustn't have. Wait, she mustn't have because only his fingerprints were found. Well, no, it says Bears Corda's fingerprints. It doesn't say Bears only Corda's fingerprints. I feel like they'd be specific enough about this. There's Andrew's fingerprints and then tomato juice. Actually, yeah. How did you knock over the vase and not the the glass? Hmm. I think you do. Oh, right, profiles. That's a fucking thing. I keep forgetting. Could it perhaps be your love of this woman? Objection. Yeah, okay, insensitive. I get it. Maybe it's not pressing on this one. Okay, so it was... Open the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. So... Hmm... They probably don't want me to show the guitar case twice in a row. That'd be weird. What could it be? 
Okay. Clear my head. What do they have to say after this is done? Phoenix can't afford to let up on her now. Wasn't planning on letting up, but she's at her weakest now. Yeah, if we had a weapon to hit her with, I'm sure a weapon is hiding somewhere in the court record waiting to be found. So I do need... It, it is absolutely evidence. It's not some, like, press this thing three times in a row. Nonsense. Oh, wait. Maybe it needs me to press this again so I have the opportunity to present ev evidence. Okay, no, I do need to... It's specifically saying I need to show her evidence on this one. Now... What is this article about? Reliable sources say that Juan Corda has been getting in close with mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A.A. We know this, and she confessed to it. Hotel guide map. She would be there. There's the hall and lobby. It's actually a pretty simple building layout. <sighs> There's some water, but only on top of the lid. Hmm. It's not the note, and it's not Celeste herself. Judging by the place it fell, there would have absolutely been some water on the lid, so that's not the lie. You could see, like, the wet marks along the ground. I feel like I'm overthinking this. Toughie. Let's make choose Bears Andrews fingerprints. This is our last chance, too. I mean, I guess I did just save. I could afford to be a little bit risky. I present the guitar case again! Objection! Wait, really? Why? There's no way you're the one who opened the guitar case. Okay, that's a little bit disappointing. Why would you say that? It's elementary, my dear. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. That that guy's not here yet. Hold on, we have to finish the trilogy first. Because <laughs> the only fingerprints on this guitar case are those of the victim. I I guess. I did say that, but also I just assumed because it didn't say only corridors. Ah. Oh. What is it, Miss Andrews? You shouldn't assume that I must have left Prince just because I touched the case. What do you mean? What if I were to tell you that I was wearing gloves at the, t at the time? Gloves? Why would you be wearing gloves at the time? It was the night of the award ceremony. So of course I dressed up for the occasion. Yes, now I remember. I'm almost sure I was wearing a pair of thin gloves. Hmm, I see. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems the witness was wearing gloves at the scene of the crime. That's strange, because there were gloves on the gla- or fingerprints on the glass. There were no gloves on the glass, I guarantee you. That would make it very hard to drink out of. Why is that strange? You have something that would prove I was not wearing gloves at the time? Yup. I have your proof right here. This wine glass wine glass. You left your fingerprints very clearly on this wine glass. Ah. Fuck. Ah. Ah. Oh, don't mind me. I just banged my knee on the witness stand. Ah. <laughs> Not actually. I'm good. I'm good. I know one of you watching this is kind enough to actually be worried. And bless your heart. You're a sweetheart. Love yourself more. Even if you took your gloves off when you poured yourself this glass of juice, wouldn't you think it was just a little strange that you put your gloves back on just to open the guitar case? Ah! Oh my god. <laughs> she has a... S how, what? What just happened? Her glasses spontaneously exploded and she pulled a new pair out of nowhere. Always be prepared. 
she tried to do the anime flash thing, but it was it was too powerful. This game is not meant for that that kind of power levels. That's why the clown had limiters. <laughs> order, order. Looks like he hit the nail on the head this time. Actually, I think I hit her glasses. What do you mean? I believe the guitar case plays a very important role here. But it's just an empty case. I wonder if it really was empty, though. B the guitar... The bright red guitar was at the studio. You don't have to put a guitar in there! Phoenix, drop all of your presumptions. Women can love women, and men can love men. Go back to Edgeworth! <laughs> what was in the guitar case was not the bright red guitar. You don't mean it was a bright white guitar? <laughs> This man's a fucking idiot. I fucking love this game. Wait, that's not right either. Hmm, I admit it would be unnatural for someone to do that. I should probably save real quick. Hold up. Oh, great. Now I'm old. The judge got me. Fuck. Ow, fuck. <laughs> so DeWitt, this was not wearing gloves, despite the fact that on the case... Your Honor, this is obviously the defense's usual misdirection tactic at work. Completely ignore everything that's been said so far. Steer the court towards an unrelated topic and lull us all into his misguided... No, Your Honor. Please recall that Miss Andrew had testified that the face fell onto the guitar case. Which means that the case was closed when the crime took place. However, it is wide open in this photo of the crime scene. I am sure this guitar case has some relation to the murder. If you are so sure, right? I'm sure you could somehow substantiate your outrageous claim, correct? Please, enlighten us as to why the guitar case has anything at all to do with this murder. Uh... Can you do that, Mr. Wright? Um... Well... Let's suppose for a second that the bright red guitar was not the only thing that could have been in the case. The bright red guitar not being the only thing? Don't tell me it was a bright yellow guitar! I'm one step ahead of this writing, I swear. <laughs> so you intend to push your theory that the case was not empty? Is that it right? I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove. I don't lie to people like that, Edgeworth! Whole court's just like, ooh. This is their version of therapy, of couples therapy. <laughs> Deflate that head of yours. You haven't proven anything yet. Now then, let's have it. What was inside this case at the time of the murder? Ah. Uh... I don't fucking know. You'd have to tell me. No. Uh, uh, um. Uh, mm. Mm? Is now the time to unleash our secret weapon? That's not exactly secret because the prosecution is the one who told us about it. Ha! And why would something like that be inside a guitar case, rather than this one? Why, Mr. Wright? Why? Well, I just thought it might have been possible. I'm gonna save real quick. <laughs> Only on this one, though, because we're down to our, like, absolute last straw. I have a suggestion. Why don't you put that in the void where your brain is supposed to be? Ooh. <laughs> the, the jury hype crew. <laughs> yes, and never bring it out again. Can't a foolishly foolish fool get some love? You still think you can prove your theory? Can you prove the guitar that the guitar case was not empty at the time of the murder? I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove. Okay, we're back. So what could it be? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Not the camera, that was taken by her. Wine glass, crime photo. Said he was strangled by a scarf. Was it his own scarf or something else? Eh, they'd probably have shown it if they had it. It's not Celeste and Pax. Not this. The scarf that stabbed the knife. Hmm. Let me check something. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, 
I'm thinking. I'm trying to think. I gotta think. It was inside the case at the time of the murder. So it would have to be as someone was stabbing him. Then... Okay, the photo of Matt sleeping showed him in the nickel samurai suit. Which would imply that... He had, um... That he was wearing at the time. Although, he never did say, specifically, that it was him. And we know that the Nickel Samurai was supposed to have a press conference later. But he knew nothing about it. So either he was going to be pushed on there without a clue, or someone else was going to dress as him. Surely it's not the Nickel Samurai suit. That's right! Because Old Bag said she saw the Nickel Samurai come out of the room. She didn't say anything about him going in. This is probably the totally wrong track, and I'm about to lose. Go for it! This is... this is a photograph. I can't believe that worked. <laughs> yes, it was important, is what is in that picture, Your Honor. In this picture? It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. What I am proposing is... Inside the guitar case was the, the Nickel Samurai, the hero's very own costume. What?! <laughs> Mr. Wright, explain yourself! Wright, are you saying that the witness opened the guitar case to take out my costume? What insane point would there be to doing something like that? That insane point would be to wear the costume, of course. Miss Andrews put it on to hide her identity so she could make her escape. After all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave, could you, Miss Andrews? You cuck. <laughs> I refuse to accept your theory! Do you have anything to support such a preposterous idea? Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big scoop, who looks oddly like a frog. And in the end, she managed to get this shot, correct? You? You mean this photo? Oh my god, he's actually onto something. Water! Water! It looks like we've watered into quite another mess again, haven't we? What the fuck is going on in my court? Nice job, Phoenix. Well, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. <laughs> hmm, so the real murderer was hiding inside a costume. Wait one second, Your Honor. Nickel Samurai's costume would have been Mr. Matt Hongar's. Why would something of the defendants be in the victim's room? Inside the guitar case of all places. Hmm, true. That is a little baffling. Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. Uh, uh oh. It could easily be either of these. Okay, save on this one again. Um, it wasn't stolen, because he would have had to have been wearing it right after. So, a spare is e very genuinely believable. She's the manager. Mr. Ungar did not take his costume off during the break period. In that case, the costume we were talking about was a spare one. What? Then, are you saying that on the night of the murder, there were two Nickel Samurai costumes at the Gatewater Hotel? Yes, Judge. Now, tell me, Judge, what number comes after two? Well, I know this one. I know this one. Ah. Uh... Starts with a th sound, I think. Problem is, I know the next three letters all start with th so I can't tell. It's either three, four, or five. Hmm. <laughs> Y'all ever seen some of the, like, the original Arabic numeric system things? Because they make so much more sense. The original versions of them were, like, each number was represented by the angles that make it up. Like, one would have, like, the little crook at the top, and that's one angle. Two was more like a Z-shape, so it had two angles. Three has three, and it was all, like, straight lines. It, it's really cool. Now, how do you explain the costume that was inside the guitar case? 
It would mean that the victim himself had brought the spare to the ceremony on purpose. Imagine, cosplaying as his rival. What happened if Phoenix and I traded suits for a day? Would that be weird? <laughs> Honestly, I feel like either of them would kill- You know what, hold on. Now I need to know if that's a picture. Phoenix in Edgeworth clothes. Oh my god, wait a minute! <laughs> Hold on! <laughs> hey, yo, wait! This kind of fire, though! <laughs> Look at this! Look at that, chat! He makes it work! Oh my god, Edgeworth in the freaking hobo outfit. <laughs> Not hobo, what am I saying? They make it work! Like, I had a feeling Edgeworth would look pretty good in it, but damn! Good on you, Phoenix. Okay. Enough of that. Sorry. Completely got distracted. But but why? Why would you interrupt this court with just a couple of young men in slightly different outfits? The victim, Mr. Corda, was a jamming ninja. Ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nickel Samurai spare costume with him? I'm sorry, I got lost in the joke for a second. Where are we? What could be the reason behind such a peculiar act? Oh yeah, the costumes. And therein lies the sticking point. What are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner monologue? Huh? No, I just... Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why do you think the victim had the Nickel Samurai spare costume? Phoenix, are you sure you can explain this one? Absolutely. Think carefully before you answer, and then answer with gusto. I believe in you. Here you go. Take that! What is this? On the night of the murder, after the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yes, the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at this conference. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up right. What struck me as strange was that Mr. Ungard himself said he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a press conference that night. But how can that be? The way I see it, that can mean only one thing. The conference was set up by none other than the victim, Mr. Juan Corda himself. The, the victim? The guy who's... The guy who's currently dead? Yes, Your Honor. Huh. Weird. Yes. The spare nickel samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. Mr. Corda was going to hold the press conference as the nickel samurai. Sneaky little shit. He was going to dress up as the nickel samurai and hold a conference? But why would the victim do such a thing? That's something I don't quite know yet, however. What I am concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at the conference. The nickel samurai was going to confess something. And by confess, I'd wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that Juan Corda, posing as a Nickel Samurai, was going to speak about Matt on guard. Yes, I guess that is what it would mean. But if that's the case, that's not a confession, that's public disclosure. Hmm. Miss Andrews? I can see why you are pros at what you do. Pardon me? Yes, just as you say, the press conference was set up by Juan. And you didn't mention this because Miss Andrews please offer us an explanation for this I was when he asked to help set it up and the person who prepared the second costume for him that was also me you wanted bet everything on the Jan and ninja this year and if he lost the Grand Prix he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him that's what he thought anyway he was going to ruin him, huh? Looked like somehow Juan had, his, had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. What? What? Uh-oh. And do you know what the secret of Mr. Ongard's is, Miss Andrews? A 
that's something only Juan knew. I... I don't know what it is. Ah! I see! Bailiff! We gotta purge her again! Get him out of here! <laughs> the judge finally just has had enough. I... I've probably been coming off quite suspicious to everyone. But that's to be expected. I've been trying to protect Matt, after all. P protect Mr. Ongard? And yet again, another strange bit of truth comes to light, it seems. How odd that you seem to confess your... your client's guilt now that you're looking sketchy. Well, better listen to everything she says. Miss Andrews, if you could, please tell us the truth about your behavior. Yes, Your Honor. I understand. Protecting Matt? From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Matt had to kill Juan, no matter what. And he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course, the button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. Hmm. This does account for everything. And is legally perjury, so we really shouldn't be listening to anything you have to say. You literally just confessed to covering up a murder. Love you, Adrian, but man, you're dumb. This is a horrible idea. Well, I am the logical type. No, you're fucking not. <laughs> We're finally seeing her true self. She's more nervous than a scared rabbit. If the defense can find no fault with this testimony, I am ready to make a ruling. Please keep that in mind as you cross-examine, Mr. Wright. Looks like somehow everything has swung to the opposite end of the scale again. That just means I have to put my weight to this and turn her logic upside down. Ooh, uh, maybe save. <laughs> Saving this one, because it still has a couple more charges in the health bar. Alright. Would you say that was your intuition speaking to you? Don't confuse my methods of reasoning with your own. Ugh. If you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three things? Phoenix, you are a law student. M. M. O. Massively multiply multiplayer online game. <laughs> multiplier. God damn, I can't speak. Motive means an opportunity. A motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. Close enough. If you think these three things through, the answer becomes quite clear. You should have already known that, Phoenix. You're a law student, for God's sake. They didn't teach that to us at school. Yes, they did! At least not from what, from my, not from what I remember. Did that happen to me now? I had to kill Juan no matter what. Why? So would you say this need came from the press conference? Yes. Do you know why Juan chose that event in the hotel for the conference? Because that one he could do the most damage to the public's beloved Matt on guard. And you knew of this plan, didn't you, Miss Andrews? Yes, because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. But if you wanted to help bring down Matt, why would you protect him now? But I'm sure Mr. On guard himself didn't know anything about the press conference. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know about the press conference? Yeah, he said so himself. Anyway, the important thing here is that this information was not in your testimony. Yes, I agree. It's almost like there's supposed to be <laughs> some sort of precedent for that. Oh, yes, she definitely lied on the witness stand. Miss Andrews, if you could correct yourself, please. Grasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Wright? I know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. Has Mr. Ongar did something to hurt or betray you personally? Why do you ask? You were the one who helped Mr. Cordon at this press conference. And that event was supposed to bring down Mr. Ongar, yet you still helped out. Objection! The person on trial right now is Mr. Ongar, right? The witness was thinking helping the victim of this plan is none of our concern. In any case, this means that the defendant had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this to myself? What do you mean? That's a perfectly valid question! Doesn't have an alibi. How do you know that? Were you sitting there watching him sleep the entire time? But 
didn't you already testify earlier that Mr. On Guard was taking a nap in his room? Are you telling me now that that too was a lie so you could cover for Mr. On Guard? I'm not telling you anything of the sort. When I went to go get him for the show, he honestly was sleeping. However, as to whether he was sleeping the entire time, that I cannot say. I was too busy setting up the stage at the time. Hmm, I keep trying, but I can find no flaws with what Miss Andrews has said now that she's changed it seven times. I can't say the same for some people here in this courtroom, however. You don't get to edit your testimony, Mr. Wright. I'm not on the witness stand. Exactly. The judge is glaring straight at Mia. Huh? He's glaring at you, smart guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course. The button and the knife. Hmm. Wait. The button was in his pants. You could hardly call the knife decisive evidence. Fingerprints on the knife could very well be a clever camouflage. And it wasn't even the real murder weapon. Then what about the button? The button. It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and his murderer fought. And during the fight, the killer ripped the button from the nin jamming ninja's costume. You're talking about this button, correct? That button was found in the pleats of Matsukama. Isn't that correct? I would think that makes it very decisive evidence. Uh, how convenient. Looks like you are out Fox again, Mr. Wright. Fucking got his ass. Anyway, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. Thank goodness Mia can still look at me. With an icy stare, yes. Don't forget, I'm a ghost. I can read your fucking mind, Phoenix, at any time. Miss Andrew, for Mr. Wright's sake, please add this information to your testimony. You know he's a bit slow. It was torn off of Juan during his fight with Matt. It was torn off of Juan. How do you know? And how do you know that? When the ends of the threads on the buttons in the costume were matched up, they were found to fit together perfectly. Or so I heard. Hmm, I've heard that before too. But why would Miss Andrews know about this case down to such a fine detail? Don't look at me like that. Just because I'm prepared and you're not? No. Oh, and I thought I had her this time for sure. I think the tripper up on has to be here, but where and what? Okay, so I'm guessing that's the one I need to present something on. Let's press this one last line really did was stab the guy in the back, didn't you? And at the worst possible time. Objection! Who's to say she really stabbed the guy in the back, as you put it? This witness could have disclosed these things about Mr. Ongard at any time. Why, then, would she wait until there was a large audience before doing so? The same reason why Mr. Corda planned such an elaborate conference. This answers one caused Mr. Ongard as much damage as she possibly could. This witness bears ill will toward the defendant. This isn't the Phoenix Wright Wax Philosophical Power Hour. And please, stop slandering the witness. As I expected, Miss Andrews' testimony seems pretty solid. Really, because to me, it sounded a little wishy-washy. Wishy-washy. Well, I guess we'll see if I press a little more. You should know this by now, but you'll need strong, deci decisive evidence to make her talk. I'm gonna pin you down this time, Andrews. Phrasing, Phoenix! Okay, so this is the one they wanted me to press it with. Yes? Save real quick. I'm actually gonna make another save, just because I have a bad feeling. Hmm. I was torn off of Juan during his fight with Matt. Mm-hmm. Let me take a look at this again. Torn off. Yep, that was torn off. You can still see the threads loose. Hmm. The was torn off. Why would the button get torn off? So confused. It was ripped from his costume, is covered in Corda's blood. Wait! If it was covered in blood, then it must have still been on when he was stabbed. If it was torn off while they were still fighting, then... I guess it could have been on the floor. Wait, no! 
There's hardly any blood on the floor at all. There's barely any blood on the costume. Ooh, we may have found it. Nope, that wasn't it. Uh, this one. Okay. So it wasn't the button. Okay, just to double check. This is the one they wanted me to present it on, right? You trip her up on it has to be here, but where and what? Bad terms with on guard. Hmm. Hmm. Turn up on. They definitely want me to press on this one. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Possibly be. Angry. Emotion. Insert emotion here. Fuck me. Um, okay. So, so what are we what are we essentially trying to prove right now? We know that she was helping him. We're trying to prove at this moment that it was not Matt who did the murder. We want to disprove what she's saying. So what about this proves that she or that he at the very least was not the murderer? The button is the only thing I can think about. I feel like I'm right, and I'm just missing one step in the process. Damn it. Oh! This is the photo taken of the steel of the Nickel Samurai leaving. If there was a fight, he would be a freaking mess. Maybe? That's probably not it. Didn't we just present that the last time? Well, I said that about the freaking guitar case, and now here we are. Hmm. One hand claps. They kind of help me focus. I don't know. I actually have no fucking clue. You know what? Fuck it. Nope, that's not it. Oh, well. A little bit late. <laughs> Let me load that save again. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. What was torn off of Juan during his fight with Matt? Matt's manager felt that I had to protect him. He didn't have an alibi for what he was doing. I know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. What did she say about this again? These things have hurt or betray you personally. Edgeworth won't let us get an answer on this. Actually, wait. Yeah, why? What motive did Matt possibly have to kill him? He just won. He had won. If anything, he would have wanted him to stick around to, like, gloat. Knife. Does she say anything about how the murder was committed? Oh, 
me. Let me double check this autopsy report. Can I, like... No, there's nothing else. Uh, could it perhaps be this? Objection! Huh? Why? Wait, huh? That, that was an incredibly stupid guess. Why does that make sense? This is the victim's autopsy report. It clearly states this cause of death was strangulation by a scarf? You don't strangle somebody from the front! S strangulation. The knife stabs the victim was done after the victim had already died. What does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it, which would mean that it was ripped off the costume when? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly. Which means he was already dead. It, it was what I was trying to do. They just chose a weird way of doing it. It is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Struggle because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. Ah. Uh. That's right, Miss Andrews. There's no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off of the victim's already dead body. Order! Order! What is the meaning? What is the meaning of this right? And I was gonna say that, Edgeworth! So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? So that means someone did it and then put it in the guy's pants on purpose? And I assume he did not do that to himself? What does that change? Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We know this button was torn off during the fight. So the murderer took the time and effort to purposely rip this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? I'm not in a good mood with you right now, Phoenix Wright, goddammit! Mr. Wright, does this mean... Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with this button? What was it? In the crime on On Guard. There's only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. On Guard. There's no way anyone would put a bloody button in their own pants. That's right, Mr. On Guard was set up. By the real killer, of course. Here we go. And the real murderer is... Not murderer, the real murderer! Because clearly this one's fake, he's gonna get up any second, come in here and just say it was a prank. I've seen the YouTubes! Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer then? Why is this my job? Finally. Can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet. Not until the very end. The real killer. The person who planned to frame Mr. On Guard. <sighs> Sorry, Adrian. Oh, look, she's so cool. She's like, she's like Samus, but with glasses. She's so fucking cool. Miss Adrian Andrews. I choose you! <laughs> you are Mr. Corridor's killer. Use confession! <laughs> what? Ah! Order! 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 Mr. Wright! What the fuck? That's the wrong anime! This is a very grave matter. Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews. How preposterous. You can't stick any of that on me. I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then, then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. Ongard, naturally. The knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you. Okay, she's just manifesting those glasses by sheer willpower at this point. Then, what What about the button that was found in Matsukama? Fish, I just said! This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were the person who found his body or the killer. However, if Mr. Ongard was the real killer, there's no way he would have put such incriminating evidence in his own Hakama. Ah! Oh, there they are. <laughs> she had to put that one up. She's running low on energy. The only person who could have put this button into Mr. Ongard's Hakama is the person who went to wake him from his nap, which is you yet again, Miss Andrews. I see. What about the empty guitar case? She's the only one who could have known. That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. 
That costume he used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was just such a costume inside the guitar case? It could only have been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is you, Miss Adrian Andrews. No. Oh, no! I feel awful! I... Miss Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the, on the guitar case, and it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. That's right! That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But, the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposely left her fingerprints in the glass to show that, yes, indeed, she was the classic day's discoverer of a dead body. Ah! And to top it all off, there is this photo. We're gonna cut back her, and those glasses are gonna be back, I guarantee you. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on Earth could believe this nickel samurai is Mr. On Guard. He would be much too short for his own costume if it was him. Oh, yep, the little ring on the joystick just broke off. Damn. Ah, it's not so bad. Just gotta be more careful. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you're also kind of short in stature, are you not? Please, stop. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? Uh... I've got her this time. Miss Andrews? I... I refuse to testify. What was that? There's a law. It says I can't be forced to testify about something if it can incriminate me. I plead the fifth. We're not in America, lady. Talk! That's actually probably a rule in other places. I'm just too stupid to think more than that. You are absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self-incrimination. A thing that, if it existed, would completely erase the entire purpose of this entire series. You really want to bring this up? You doom us all! <laughs> By allowing a witness to not testify, a testimony can cause damage to themselves. What?! How the fuck did no one think of doing that?! Fuck it. We've had so many legal people on the stands. <laughs> Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. Actually, thinking back to yesterday in Mr. Ongard's room. Yep, this is Franny's idea. Adrian Andrews! Yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood! Uh, Alright. That's it. That's when Francisca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrew to not testify if things look bad. You did a good job proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. But there's still one thing you haven't done. <laughs> one thing I haven't done. <laughs> Forgive my evil laugh. Damn it, he's hot. <laughs> What's wrong, right? Are you finished already? run out of evidence. After going through the entire court record? Yeah. Turns out when you use all of the evidence in the case, you'll eventually run out. What is so humorous, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sure you realize this as well, Your Honor, but everything the good lawyer here has proven up to this point is meaningless. You know, all of those incriminating pieces of evidence, what if we just ignored them? What? Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? What do you mean? <laughs> We've only proven that she is the only person who could have possibly done this. Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to provide a single piece of definitive proof. We have a mountain of proof. The costume that only she knew about. The crime scene that only she was at. The... The, the defendant who only she could have pinned the crime on. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbor a wish to murder Miss Corda. The power of a wish, Phoenix Wright, is not something you can understand. Miss Andrews, you... Did you want to kill Mr. Corda? I plead the fifth. 
I believe this may lead to me incriminating myself, so I'll abstain from answering. But, Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There's nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of due to my silence. No, she's taking that defiant attitude again. Mia, what should we do? Somehow we've landed in the worst possible situation. I think we've reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. Miss Adrian Andrews has refused to testify. And the defense's theory that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid definitive proof. But that's not true. Literally, we have nothing but proof. In this situation, there's only one thing this court can do, and that is to declare a recess. Recess? I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter. And at tomorrow's trial... T tomorrow We don't have a tomorrow. If we don't get a not guilty verdict today, then... Please wait, Your Honor. That's not necessary. The trial. Please continue the trial. What are you sweating for? Well, client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That... That's not it. This isn't about that. It's not him who... Him dying that I'm worried about. Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is. Please, let the trial continue. If I don't get the verdict, then Maya... It's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Now then, this court is... We could just talk amongst ourselves. It is not impossible for this trial to continue. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you... It's true, Miss Andrews hold the right against self-incrimination. However, if the topic of conversation was something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, and she has no right to withhold testimony. Yes, that is very true, but actually, there is one little thing that I'm curious about. Miss Andrews, when you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes, and? I can't help but think how unnatural that is. Usually when one finds a body, they are shaken up, not stirring a glass of juice. Clever, Edgeworth. So my actions were unusual, and I've already... Before you speak, I want to state that if you have a reason behind your actions, I'd like you to testify to that effect. T testify <coughs> Ah, sorry. Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again, as to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. Hmm. I don't know what it is about Edgeworth today, but I can't get a good read off him. He just wants the truth! Is he friend or foe? I just don't know. Oh, the places you'll go! The court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Miss Andrews, if you please. I think that there was a play on words for misandry this entire time. I had no idea. That's kind of cool. Glass of juice. I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. And Juan, who seemed slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower vase over. Interesting. You didn't notice that he was dead with a knife sticking out of his chest. So you poured that glass of juice for the victim. Why didn't you say so in your earlier testimony? Sorry. I'm good. I'm still old. I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. Edgeworth, what the heck is going on in that brain of yours? Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your... My God, what is wrong with me? Ah. Out! Okay, really quick. Uh, overwrite the most recent save file so I can continue. Okay. Last two didn't leave. Oh, right. Press. But there wasn't anyone else in the room, right? Of course not. Then, who did you pour it for? Mr. Wright, there's a rhyme and reason for everything. Can you wait just a little longer for it to be revealed to you? In other words, Wright, be quiet and listen. Precisely. I couldn't have said it better than myself. 
Oh god, the bond of the gaze between these two is too strong. <laughs> Press again. So it was a mess? I'm sure it wasn't messy because of your fight with Mr. Corda. Objection. Objection, hearsay. I understand your frustrations of not being able to prove your theory. However, before you go accusing people of crimes, go find yourself some evidence. Mm. I did. And you ignored it. And then what did you see next, witness? Just like you're ignoring me that now. And like you were ignoring me back then. This really is just couples therapy for these two. Come on, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. Oh, right. Slumped over? Yes, he was just sitting there with his eyes tilted forward. With his head tilted forward, eyes closed. He really looked like he was sleeping. So just me or did that right there sound a little odd? Hmm. I... I guess? It's a weird fucking way to sleep, though. Press again. I already forgot what she said. Slumped over? Yes, he was just sitting there with his head tilted forward, eyes closed. He really looked like he was sleeping. Hmm. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. Really? And what did cross your mind? I thought maybe he'd smashed everything up in anger because he lost the Grand Prix. Then felt tired after his rampage, so he decided to take a nap. Anyways, that's what I thought. I see! So you didn't think he was dead at all! Honestly, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. You thought he fainted? I thought he was asleep at first, but then the room was in such a messy state, I thought maybe he'd gotten into a fight with someone. That's when you want to pour the glass of juice? Yes, he always has a hard time waking up. Swan always has a glass of tomato juice to drink. Hmm, I see. And after that, what happened next? When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower vase. Uh, wait a minute, I just thought of something. Hold on. Prime photo. Is that... Okay, I think the bottle is open. Does look pretty full though, but that could just be a trick perspective. Actually, yeah, that's way too full for it to have come from there. What the fuck? Huh? Holy. Ah, how'd you come to realize that he was in fact dead? I shook him over and over, but I never got a response. So I set the glass down on Tresser and tried to take his pulse. I, I was shocked and staggered backward. And knocked the flower vase over. So that's what it that's what happened. Yes. This is what it all comes down to. Huh? This is the absolute end for both sides. Adrian is letting her guard down. Phoenix, now is our best chance yet to kill the prosecution's case. Isn't that a bit harsh? Miss Andrews, will you tell us the truth this time? Okay. Sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. I realized he was dead, that's why I knocked the flower vase over. I'm trying to think of, like, the sequence of events. The sequence of events is... Whoever it was came in there, killed Juan... Stabbed him... To make it look like Matt had done it... And then... Used the button to do so as well. And then... During the fight, a lot of stuff was knocked off, but not the flower vase. Supposedly... The case was still shut at that point? Guitar case? And then the water... The vase was knocked over. No, the guitar case was still closed. So whoever was the killer couldn't have gotten to the... Steel Samurai. Yeah, again, by the way, where the fuck is the... Uh, I guess, actually, yeah. The whole fucking Steel Samurai suit is only a theory. Even though she confirmed it, we still don't have any evidence of it. My brain hurts. My guess is we have to point out the fact that he had a knife in his chest, but I don't know where to do it. I'm gonna save again. Now that I pressed everything. 
This is the one they seem to want me to, uh... Oh no, this one. So, yeah. It should probably be the knife, shouldn't it? Objection! Nope. Is this the one that Nick said was weird? Oh no, this isn't the one. Okay, wait, hold on. This is it. Okay, right one this time. Try again. Nope, still not it. Nope, don't say it. Load. Ooh, I almost screwed myself over there. Alright. Quick pause. I'll be right back. know the answer. Let's... Okay. Okay. I should probably have given that a bit of a more visible background. Sorry. <sighs> Not that. The thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. I'm almost certain I'm right. It... Sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner... I thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. We just tried him on this. He was dead. That's when I knocked the flower vase over. Okay. So, our current theory is that whoever did this, because we, we currently have it, like, decently convinced to the court that it may not have been Juan and that someone else probably did this. We just don't have clear evidence that it's, well, quote-unquote clear evidence. I genuinely don't think the writers know what that means at this point. <sighs> Sorry, little rubber bits. Um, our current theory is that whoever did it killed him and that the guitar case was still closed. They took the suit and then Adrian came in and knocked it over, in which case it would have spilled on the inside. But that's also part of our theory, which they just said was not good enough, so I don't know. I feel like it's the knife! I'm so sure! It makes so much sense! We've been here for an hour and a half, and we still haven't gotten past the first- the, the end of the first trial. This is ridiculous. I forgot how long this case is. Uh, I'm- I'm starting to consider looking it up. I'm gonna keep trying, though. If it gets to the point where I have to try every single piece of evidence on every single option, then I feel like that I might as well just start using a walkthrough at this point. When you knock the flower vase over. So... He was dead. I knocked the flower vase over. The thing is, like, nothing we're saying is anything that ha hasn't already been covered. 
So what I have to find is hopefully something that hasn't already been stated. Didn't she say something about him getting in a fight here? And the room was in such a messy state, I thought maybe he got into a fight with someone. Yeah. Yeah, if someone fainted, wouldn't you call for help? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I think I get it. I think I get it. I know what I need to do. This thing slumped over and tired looking in the corner. We have to compare that to the picture of the crime scene that shows him with the knife. Because fuck the logic in this. Nope, never mind. I'm still wrong. Can I get a hint? Oh wait, actually, oh! There, I believe, there is a site that does give you hints. Sort of. Hmm. I'm gonna keep trying though. Well, if I do end up needing help, that is what I will use, no walkthrough. So I want to pour him some juice. Let me double check the evidence I have. I have the Nickel Samurai costume, essentially. Press conference. Radio transceiver. Last camera, which has literally nothing to do with this. Magazine clipping. We have the map, which doesn't tell us anything. Tar case, but only on top of the lid. Bears cord as fingerprints. Found next to the victim, it's filled with tomato juice, bears, Andrew's fingerprints. Uh, here it is, after it had happened. I swear, if it does have anything to do with the case, I'm going to be... The guitar case. I'm going to be very upset, because there is nothing about that that is new. It's literally just stuff we've already said. Okay. I'm taking the hint. Ace Attorney. There we go. Uh, Adrian Andrews. There we go. Don't have to press to, contra to contradict the test one. Well, that's fucking helpful. Adrian says she didn't think Juan was dead. Okay. Yeah, some evidence that he looked really, really dead. I'm, I'm right. It's just in a fucking. Okay. Screw the hints. This was pointless. Now I'm just madder because I know exactly what it was. fuck is it? Okay, it's either the knife or the photo. Those are the only things I can think of that prove that he's dead. That's what the walkthrough, not the walkthrough, the hint thing I found said, by the way. It's like, oh, don't press. Also, Juan looks dead. Literally the only things I've said this entire time. It was pointless. There was one more, but I'm pretty sure at that point you just fucking told me exactly what to do. And fuck that. Okay, so we... Do I'm right. We do have to prove that he looked dead as fuck. So... I don't fucking know. Thought the, okay. We had to prove that he's dead. The thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. That sounds sketch as fuck. In fact, now that I'm looking at it, I probably should have realized this sooner. Okay, no more hints for me. Now I just feel pathetic. Okay. Did we try the knife on this one? I think we did. Did we try the photo? I can't remember which one we did that on. I'm gonna try the knife first, just in case. Okay, that's not it. Oh, good, we're right back here. Okay, is this the one we tried the crime scene photo on? Oh, come on! Phoenix, why did you point out the other one as being weird? So you honestly didn't think he was dead when you found him? 
Could it be because of this knife that was in his body? You know, the one I just showed you in an alternate universe like five seconds ago? That's, that's actually very annoying. That one sucked. <laughs> no, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body? Ah! Uh, what is the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? There's a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Corda's chest. Anyone who saw this scene would have immediately thought that here... That here was a dead man. Ah, uh, um... That's, well... You see... I doubt a single person in the world would mistake this for someone who fainted, and then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. Your point is? Miss Andrews! Her testimony just now, it was all one giant lie. Ah! Your lie has proven one thing very clearly, that you are the real killer. No! So all of that was quite literally for nothing. It looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. <clears throat> Excuse me, just a sec. Yeah, I feel dirty. I feel wrong for having used that fucking hint. Even though it was already information that I knew. Defendant Mr. Matt, uh, defendant Mr. Matt on guard is not guilty after all. That, that's impossible. You're wrong. Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. It, it wasn't me. It wasn't me, I tell you. This, so that entire little segment had literally no impact. She just decides to accept us saying it now. That, that, that actually is kind of stupid and very bad. Like, that's... That's the fucking circus case level of that. That's actually very annoying. What the hell? It was Matt. I swear it. He's the one who killed Juan. But you were the one who refused to testify. And your reason for not doing it was that you might end up incriminating yourself. <clears throat> That's because... Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. Sorry, let me uh, mute up for another second real quick. Much better. Oh. There we go. What exactly are you hiding that might incriminate you? I... I... I refuse to testify. And there is no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Matt on guard's innocent has, innocence has been clearly demonstrated. Is... Is it over? Have we... We found the truth at last. What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually, well, usually the real killer confesses his or her guilt. And now that I think about it, this is the first time someone has it. Okay, this is kind of cool now. You, I'll let that one little fuck up slide. Freaking farewell turnabout, but don't let it happen again. Objection! Oh? Your Honor. The prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. What? The reason is quite simple. This witness has yet to speak the absolute real truth. The absolute real truth? What are you... Witness, don't you understand yet? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head, but as long as you protect yourself through your silence, Matt on guard will go free. And in his place, you will become the guilty party. That, that's a lie. I don't believe you. What? I, I was told if I spoke, if I spoke, it would be all over and Matt would never be declared guilty. What in the world is she talking about? Has she lost it? I, I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Francisca Von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrew lives by gripping tightly onto the words of another. She doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. Then right now, Miss Andrews is... Yesterday she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss Moncarma. Don't say a word no matter what happens. If you do, Matt on guard will be acquitted. Miss Andrews undyingly believes in those words right now and is clinging onto them. What should we do? 
This, this is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. Sandra's has to be the killer, right? Here's where the case gets interesting. Oh, this is gonna be so good. All we have to do now is, is get our not guilty. That is my only priority. It wasn't me. I'm begging you. Please believe me. I didn't kill Juan. Help, please. Someone help me. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. What can't continue on like this. Therefore, I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What I intend to do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Right. I suggest you think very carefully about this. Think about what this witness did and what she did not do. And think about who's the real mastermind behind this crime. Who's the real mastermind? Isn't that obvious? There's no one else who could be except the woman crying over there. Right? Come now. What will you do? What kind of man are you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Not guilty saves Maya's life here and now. But that wouldn't be the truth. You've shown us a path, Edgeworth, and we're gonna walk it to its bitter end. We want the truth and nothing but. I have to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But I can't bring myself to do it like this. Not when she's making a face like that. Miss Andrews, I'd like to know what you are really hiding. M Mr. Wright, are you sure you know what you're doing? Sure, Mr. Ongar would get an acquittal, but in his place he would be found guilty. Is this... is this how you really want this trial to end? Be quiet. How dare you? You... you're trying to trick me. That's enough. I commend you for trying, Mr. Edgeworth. However, it's clear that the defense's theory is the truth. You're wrong. What a shame. I had hoped things wouldn't come to this, however... What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my so shoulders to disclose, to disclose this to the court. I'm sorry, my, my throat is still giving me some trouble. Give me a sec. I think I'm better. I hope. S stop! Mr. Edgeworth! Oh, this poor fucking woman. This witness, how should I put this? She has an illness. What? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide in the past. Stop! Please stop! No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. I have the evidence right here. Edgeworth, you ass. Uh, that's... That's the second part of the suicide report. The attempted suicide report. What will you do now, witness? You know what I am about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the court the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. The secret of her dependent nature. Having other people know about it scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop! I beg you! If people find out... If people find out, I... I'll... If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. Jeez, Edgeworth! Edgeworth, how can you be so cold? However, before you die, I will pull the truth from your still-breathing lips. No matter what I have to do. So, will you tell the court yourself or shall I? Either is fine with me. I... I'll talk. Please, help me. Nothing matters anymore. My god! It's so brutal! <laughs> when I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted. Honest. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. And then I stabbed Juan's dead body with a knife and ripped off the button. 
Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. That's why, that's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. Stab the body! With the knife? Why would you do that? Isn't it obvious? To pin the blame on a certain person. A certain cowardly man! What do you mean by all this? It might take this court a little while to understand, but... This is the truth. The real killer is Matt! That scumbag of a man! I'll never forgive him! He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time! Last time? So, Miss Andrews stabbed the victim with one corner in the chest with a knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt on guard for the murder. And this, this is her crime! Falsifying evidence with that... What? How is this possible? I mean, wasn't Miss Andrews supposed to be the real murderer? Mr. Wright, please get over your shock and commence the cross-examination. Probably safe. No more hints. That that last one felt like such BS. I'm not doing that again. I will press and present every piece of evidence and every profile on every part of her testimony before I go for another hint. Fainted. Right. Press first. You could tell from the state the room was in that there must have been a fight. You're telling the truth when you said that you did not know he was dead. He, he had a scarf tied around his neck. That scarf was a part of the Jammin' Ninja's costume, so... So I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also tilted down a bit, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up and went to pour the juice. When I realized that he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. What is this plan you had? I knew right away the murderer was Matt. I knew because Juan he was going to expose Matt's weakest, point, weakest weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop Juan and silence him for good. That's when I thought I should for forge some evidence and pin this crime on Matt. So the forged pieces of evidence were the knife and the button. The first thing that came to mind was to plant the knife. To make sure that there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. That was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner had his fingerprints all over it. I thought if I used that, then the police would certainly turn their eyes toward him. Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. I slipped in, took the knife, and returned to the scene of the crime. And then, I stabbed Juan's dead body with a knife and ripped off the button. So you were the one to stab the victim with that knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. What a horrible thing I did. But at the time, I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. Then when I stabbed Juan's dead body, I suddenly realized something. If I used the button somehow, I could make Matt look even more suspect. Thought to rip one of the buttons off and then plant it in Mr. Ongard's Akama. Yes, that's what I had planned to do. But things never go that smoothly, do they? Hmm. <coughs> Sorry. Huh. I just finished returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. So what was the inconvenience? An inconvenience? There was a woman with a camera at the ready, loitering in the hallway. I'm willing to bet my spikes it was a lot of <laughs> His spikes on the back of his head are just a part of his body. There was also a woman with a ray gun at the ready, pacing back and forth. And that's Miss Oldback for you. I had already been caught and made into a big scoop for a certain week weekly tabloid once, so I couldn't very very well go go out looking like myself and get caught again. And that's why that's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. You were the one who prepared that costume, weren't you? Yes, I took it from Global Studios. I also put into Juan's guitar case the day before the award ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes. Juan wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He's going to disclose Matt's big secret there. What is this secret? That I don't know. Anyway, I thought that if I were to leave Juan's room in the Nickel Samurai costume, the people would think that Matt was the real murderer. I was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. Okay, so it was just press all. Good. I think we've heard enough. So, after that, you went back to Mr. Ongard's room and planted the button? Into Matt's comma? Yes. After that, I folded out the costume I was wearing and put it into a bag. Then I snuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. My word! What does all this mean? 
Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal is Matt Ongard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. Francisca, huh? She said that I should under no circumstances confess to what I had done. And if I just kept quiet, then Matt would be found guilty for sure. I... I had no choice but to believe in her words. What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she is not the real killer. Wait, Your Honor! The defense still... Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Miss Andrews on anything. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that point to, points to her as the murderer. The cross-examination of the witness is over, and so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness, is, witness was the culprit. Please let it go, Mr. Wright. But... But... Mr. Edgeworth, please place Miss Andrews under arrest for further questioning. Understood, Your Honor. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. That is all. Court is adjourned for today. Fuck. <laughs> no. Oh, that's a fancy looking chair. What the hell? Judge, you didn't tell me that my ex was here. <laughs> Everything the judge is connected to is alive. Today's, today's trial. It's over, and I didn't win an acquittal. Witness, would you mind if I asked you something? Edgeworth? What is it? Before you leave court today, I wondered if I might look at one thing. The card in your hand. It's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked about this. Although I didn't remember at the time you asked me about it, Mr. Wright. I remember just now. I found this in the room on that day. Adrian, are you fucking kidding me? You found a mysterious giant card in the murder scene and said nothing until now. Adrian! The room? That day. Yes. I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. He was lying there right next to him. You found that card next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it's not as if this card has any relevance to Juan's murder, right? This incredibly odd thing found on the murder scene. It's still a strange card if you ask me. Oh wait, that's, uh, that's not Edgeworth. As far as a clue to this case, I don't see why. Hold it! Witness! That card! Give it to me, hurry! Edgeworth? Do you have any idea what you have stupidly and inadvertently done? This! I can't believe you hid this from me all this time! I, I didn't mean to! What is this all about? I've never seen Edgeworth so emotional before. That card, what in the world is it? And what does it mean? Well, uh, Maya's gonna fucking die. Alright, two hours in, and we're done with the first trial. Okay, I can save over all of these now, I think. Here we go. March 22nd, 524 p.m., right in Coal Offices. Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! There they are, Pearls. I can't take it anymore. Look, it'll be all right. Everything may still work out. Huh? The condition was that we had to get a not guilty verdict. So far, the kidnapper has kept his word and hasn't hurt Maya. And he won't because Mr. On Guard hasn't given a guilty sentence yet. Right? I'm desperate as fuck right now. Uh... Cheer up. We don't have time to stand around crying. We have to get going. You're right. Mystic Maya is in much more pain than I am. Yes, that's right. So, hurry, you guys. Coin, I caught you, pal. I'm starving. You got any spare brains? Mr. Scruffy Detective? Oh, boy. Looks like Detective Gumshoe. It has been dubbed Mr. Scruffy Detective in Pearl's book now. It's just plain old Mr. Dick Gumshoe now, and I came to talk to you, pal. But we're kind of busy right now. Gumshoe? 
So what are you going to do from now on? What do you mean, pal? Well, you've been fired, right? So you have a new job lined up yet? Oh, that? Uh, what am I supposed to do now, pal? I don't have... Excuse me. I don't have anything coming in at all until my next payday. What are you talking about? You don't have another payday. I guess that means we're gonna have to work here at your place, pal. Say what? Promise? You'll be searching for things that will prove Mr. Ungar's innocence all day, right? Well, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna help you, pal. I've got lots of experience in investigating and watching over people's places. I'm great at making really simple meals, pal. I'll take care of it all. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let the Mr. Scruffy Detective take care of things. Uh, okay. By the way, what's your best dish? Instant noodles, pal. Why am I surrounded by people who only eat cheap, unhealthy foods? You're in America, Phoenix. What did you expect? <laughs> that was the first time I've ever seen Mr. Edgeworth act like that. I was only to say something like he didn't care if Mr. Andrews killed herself. He said that? That's horrible. I like the cut of his chin, though. Because of him doing that, we got the truth finally. The truth. Miss Andrews' last testimony. I wonder if that was the truth. I'll give you that there was nothing strange in testimony itself, but I still think there's something fundamentally wrong with the whole thing. You mean about that thing, pal? Why don't you want to... No, I mean almost need to frame Mr. On Guard. I couldn't figure that out from anything she said all day. Then, and you're saying that testimony was a lie? Not a lie per se, it just feels like there's more here than meets the eye. That's what Edward would like us to believe. That's such a dirty trick! Even that woman prosecutor was better than that! Francisca Von Karma. Speaking of Miss Von Karma, do you have any more information on her condition? Wasn't she shot this morning? Oh god, I forgot about that! Miss Von Karma was shot today on the way to the trial by a pistol, pal. But she's going to be fine, right? I mean, Edgeworth said she was in stable condition, but... Well, she was shot in the shoulder, so she's okay and still hanging in there. I should be done taking a bullet out, so she's probably resting at the hospital. Which one? What? Are you going to visit her, pal? N no. I was kind of thinking about it. Hey, you've actually got a heart, don't you? She looked like she was being tortured to death not being able to go to a trial today. So maybe you're good for her if you went and let her whip you for a bit, pal. Let's go let her whip us, Mr. Nick! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> now I'm definitely not going. Um, let's see. The name of the hospital... Oh yeah, it's a hot oh, clinic. No, not this guy again! The name sends a chill down my spine. Always lurking. Always watching. Ugh, I've, I've lost the voice of the guy. Fuck. Uh, ah, here it is. I have required the voice of one director, Hattie. <laughs> well, I guess it can't hurt to stop by and say hi. Oh, God. Do we have to? Please tell me- oh no, why are we here? Let's just get it out of the way. <sighs> Never thought I'd ever come back to this place. Mm, yes! Are you here to visit the patient? I'm back! Get the fuck away from me! Ah, uh, hi! Wait a second! You're- mm, Yes! I'm Director Hart. <laughs> mm. Why are you still here? Mm, yes, what is it? Mm. Can I help you? You can tell me. <laughs> yes. Director Hottie! Oh no, Edgeworth, you gullible little shit. Edgeworth. Mm, yes, I'm Director Hart. <laughs> oh, here's a pen from this morning. Mm, yes, uh, what is it? Uh -huh. Director Francisca. How's Francisco von Karma? And I don't know about her, but her whip is fantastic. Whoops! Ow! Hmm, you don't need to worry. Mm, yes. She's in good hands. Good twitchy, itchy hands. Because you see, I'm personally taking good care of her. Mm, yes. Ugh. I fucking despise you. I actually despise you. <laughs> Oh, yes. And that thing, that surgery, it went well. You have my gratitude. It looks like Edgeworth doesn't know about this director and his secret. She looks so beautiful. Absolutely terrified. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. 
Her opponent was a gun, after all. She almost won, too. When I snuck on her real secret light, she would scream real loud. You fucking disgusting man. Hmm, yes. I see. Ah, but she's really cute, too. Oh, my God. And I do that. She'd whip me with her whip. <laughs> Sorry, you got stuck on loop there for a minute. I despise you with all of my being. Oh, did I cry like a baby? Yes, but I think I could get used to it. Thank you, Freddy. You deserve it. Get back to your room. You're so mean. <laughs> so mean, my frisky friska. Die. Please. But that's good too. So <laughs> you deserve so much more than that. Even her fucking blessed whip isn't enough to undo this man's horribleness. Okay, okay, I... yes. It's time for my IV drops. <laughs> yes. Please never come back. Do you have any idea what I have been through for the past 12 fucking hours, Phoenix Wright? I am fucking livid. And what are those tulips doing in your hands, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Oh, I knew I shouldn't have come here. Do I? Oh, it would be cool if I actually had two of her. I was shot in front of the courthouse in my right shoulder. <laughs> it's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time. No, it does not. I even had full intentions of running the trials this morning. But, but that would have been too much for you. There's no need to act tough in front of us, you know. Regardless, I was dragged here by that man over there. He was so unyielding, one has to wonder if he was simply interested in stealing my case. It was the only logical course of action, given the both the... It was only the... Fuck me, I cannot speak. It was the only logical course of action, given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. Yes, it took me like four times reading that sentence to get that joke across, what of it? By taking over the case, I found myself having to clean up after you and that irresponsible deal you made. I think I know what deal he's referring to. The deal. What's the deal with Miss Von Karma? You made a deal with Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. In order to make sure you got your guilty verdict on Mr. Ongard, you told Miss Andrews to not testify in court today. Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have proof that I made such, an, uh, such a deal? You're denying it? It looks like you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If I had been in court today, this trial would already be over. All while hiding Miss Andrews' own crime. That isn't my problem, whether she had tampered with the evidence or not. I have only one objective, to find on guard guilty of murder. The end justifies the mean, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The end justifies the means. Ms. Von Karma. Adrian Andrews believed you when you said, if you don't tell the truth of what really happened, then, ma then on guard will be found guilty. And what does that have to do with me? Because of that, she is now in danger of being found guilty herself. All because she believed in your words until the very end. Well, now I feel a little bit shitty for it. Just kidding, that still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person, that's all. I follow the teachings of almost every JRPG, prota uh, not protagonist, antagonist, who believes that the weak should just immediately perish. But you had to know she was... Ow! I think visiting hours here are about over. So if you'll excuse me... What's wrong? Why did she suddenly cut you off? Probably because she thinks I had the advantage in that argument. Edgeworth. We need to fucking talk. What happened today at the trial, Edgeworth? It was not like you at all. I mean, I know you know, knew about Miss Andrew's condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted, but to go that far... Ah, uh, she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen, right? The cold room is a garden of judgment. I'm putting myself on the line when I stand in there. That's why I made the witness do the same. It's only natural. So what about that card? By the way, Edgeworth, you were really angry in court today. That's rare for you. Any idea what you've stupidly yet inadvertently done? That is a fucking berserk response from this guy. This. I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. 
That card, what in the world is it? You mean this? Listen, right? This is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this. A special investigation team has existed for a number of years, but few know of it. I understand. Their task is to find the owner of this card, a man called Shelley the Killer. And just as his name states, he's a killer. An assassin. The best at that. An assassin? Uh, Phoenix, think a little bit more on what he just said. So who's this Shelly the Killer? Man, that name sounds oddly familiar. The Killer is the name of a long-standing line of assassins. Long-standing? The name first appeared about a hundred years ago, I hear. Shelly is a professional name of the third heir to the Killer name. So because, so because, oh, this is Phoenix talking. So because his professional name is Shelly, he leaves cards with a shell on them? He has a habit of making sure to leave a card by the body of his victims. Why would he do something like that? We think it is a part of his duty to his clients. His duty? If he leaves a card, then his clients can be assured it was he who killed the victim. It also serves as insurance against any charges being pushed onto his clients. I see. The killer values the trust between his clients and himself above all else. Seems this is one honorable assassin with a moral conscience. I guess even honorable assassins can exist. So you think this assassin, you think he's the one who did the killing in this case? It would appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it, wouldn't you agree? Shelly the killer, huh? Yes, fucking tell him. I noticed something at the trial today. You were behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? I guess I should just tell him. As if there's any reason to not bring it up. Maya. She's been kidnapped. Kidnap? Kidnapped? What does the kidnapper want? An acquittal. I see. I had no idea. I'll prepare a rescue team as soon as possible and resolve this by tomorrow. Really? Did you hear that, Mr. Nick? Mr. Edgeworth is going to- Stop trying to console me, Edgeworth. I don't need your pity. And Maya doesn't need your help. But Mr. Nick? There's no way you could find her. We only have even a single lead to go on. There's only one way to save her. I, I have to get an acquittal somehow. It's the only way. Right. Listen. You need to know something. Juan Corda was killed by Shelly the Killer. And the client who ordered the job is Matt Ongard, your own client. Please stop! I can't listen to you. I can't believe that. I see. Well, if you want to continue your investigation, you'll need this. What is it? The hotel right now is restricted to police personnel only. So we're looking for any clues that might lead us to Shelly the Killer. If you take this with you, with you to the hotel, I'm sure they will let you enter. Proceed from Edgeworth allows Bear to freely investigate the crime scene. In any case, I must attend to the preparation for Maya's rescue team. We'll meet again if anything should happen. Now, if you'll excuse me. Mr. Nick? Do you... Do you think Mr. Ongard hired an assassin? No way. I mean, he doesn't have a psych lock. Yeah, I guess not. Maya, please. All I ask is that you make it home safe and sound. Oh, I'm fading from existence, apparently. <laughs> I guess even kidnappers can be a little clumsy. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me. Even though he said he was an assassin, I thought he was just making it up, like how Nick does with everything in court. Maya, that's a dangerous fucking gamble. Anyway, let's try out the card trick with the card I just found. Got it, Nick? Sounds like I got the door open. Oh, right, this is Maya's voice. Okay, time to go take a look around. Oh. What the fuck? Date, time, and location. Oh, it's a bear. What is this place? I got a feeling I'm not in the hotel anymore. Are those videos over there? Well, I'll worry about that later. For now, I should be looking for clues. That way I can show them to Sis and maybe get out of here. Okay. Pretty good idea. It's so dark in here that I can barely see, but... Except for, you know, the one giant light glowing incredibly bright. Right next to here. Is that a dog door? These kind of feel like videotapes. All of them. Just what kind of room is this? Oh, cute bear. That's weird. What's a figurine doing on a sofa in a place like this? I think it's a bear. Aw, how cute. It's got a lot of cuts and slits on it. I wonder if it's some kind of puzzle or something. Hmm. There's a framed picture sitting on this coffee table. It's a picture of a woman. She's kind of pretty. 
Hey, it looks like something's written here. Let's see. I think it says, with love, Celeste. I bet this could be a clue. Oh, hey. Hey, it's a computer. I've never really used one before. Um, I have no idea what the power switch on is. this thing is. Drat, there goes my plan to use this somehow to get out of here. What is, what is this thing? An antenna, I guess? And this is a VCR? There sure are a lot of electronic gadgets here. But what is an antenna doing here? A big TV screen, too. Wow, I've never seen a TV as big as this one before. Now, where's the power button? Hmm. Click. Dully, it's busted. I would so die a happy samurai fan if I ever got to see the nickel samurai on a TV like this. Ah! I can't believe I just made a joke about dying, all things considered. Yeah, seriously, Maya. Try to focus more on staying alive. Uh, locked, of course. It doesn't look like I can use the card to open this door. There's a little hole at the bottom of the door. If only I was a little skinnier, then maybe I'd be able to crawl through here. Oh, this simply will not do. I cannot have you wandering around at will. Yeah! It seems that your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. Yes? For now, I would suggest you remain cooperative. If you cannot, there are ways in which I can help you. Ways? You mean... Dead men tell no tales is how the saying goes, correct? Dead? I'm almost certain I told you on our first meeting. I am an assassin. No way. You're lying. I mean, an assassin? People are not always who they appear to be. Nick! I can't scream that well for the first scenes like that. Mr. Nick? Hmm? Oh, yes, Pearls? Got caught up in my thoughts about my situation. Mr. Edgeworth has left, you know. I guess for now I have no choice but to believe in Mr. Ongard. But I think I should listen to his story one more time. Alright, let's get going, too. Okay! What do you have to say? I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Aww. Uh, I have too many questions I need to ask. I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... You're Mr. Wright, you say? Oh yeah, there's a message here for you. A message? It's from Matt o It's from Matt on guard. Oh, here you are. What did he write? Is it something really important? I don't know. Let's see what it has to say. Mr. Lawyer Dude, I've got something really important to tell you. Why do I feel uneasy all of a sudden? Oh, Mr. Wright, so actually I have a favor to ask you. I have this cat named Shu. <laughs> I didn't put out a lot of food when I left the house, so he's probably pretty hungry. You think you could drop by my house and feed Shu for me, dude? My house is just a little ways down from the hotel, alright? This is terrible! Let's hurry! We have to feed his cat! I'm sure poor Shu's stomach is growling by now. Yeah, I guess. Client's request is a request. Guess I should go check up on his cat. I mean, it has nothing to do with helping the guy. I just don't want to leave the cat alone. And feel bad. Okay, so just down from the hotel, huh? Nope. Shit's happening. Alright now, Mr. Nick. Let's go look for clues. We have to, for Mystic Maya's sake. You shall not pass. <gasps> Miss Old Pat. Don't devalue my name and turn it into a gasp, you spiky-headed pedophoger! I should probably have looked up what that means before saying that aloud. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. I'm just gonna leave the machine... The, the machine gun firing going on in the background. Wow! That is specific. An inferior legal pr practitioner, especially one who deals with petty cases or employs dubious practices. Oh, Petty Fogger. Fogs up Petty Cases. Okay. Because of you, I've been made to look like the bad guy again. Although I did get a piece of gum from Edgy Boy, just as he promised. But what I really wanted was something much more valuable. I wanted Edgy... Oh, God. It's all your fault. You've awakened the wire beast inside of this old bag. Ah! Uh oh Did she collapse? Ah, this old bag. Keep your hands off of me. This helmet is airtight. No air gets in and no air gets out. Um, then why do you keep putting it on? Hmm. 
I don't think you can get me to move with silly questions. You're going to have to defeat me if you want to get by. I'm not hearing this. Okay, what about this? Not this. This. Maybe if I show her this letter I got from Edgeworth. Um, Miss Oldbag, if you would take a look at... What? You want me to look at this worthless piece of... Oh! Edgy poo! Ugh, is that her perfume? Pheromone d'amore I smell? Ugh. Let's see here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to conduct his investigation? Yours truly, Miles Edgeworth. Yours truly? Hmm, that man's good at flattery. Fine, but only because Edgy Poo said so, you understand? I just thought of something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. You do anything bad and I won't let you off the hook. It looks like she has strong feelings for Mr. Edgeworth. It may be, but you know nothing's good going to come of it. That's so mean, Mr. Nick. Feelings are meant to be told and shared. Ow. Every time we talk about love, I always end up with a handprint on my face somehow. How? She's like, what, seven? Eight. She's eight. How do you... Does she just, like, jump and do, like, a 360 spin to slap him in the face? <laughs> Um, so anyway, let's continue our investigation. Okay. Oh, she's back. Ah! Oh, I've been shot! <laughs> what? What now? One little thing before I forget. Can't go into Arn Guard's room today. Why? Why? Police's main investigation team is going to be in there all day, you hear? I wonder if they're the team in charge of investigating the killer. So don't go in there. Set one foot in there and you'll face the wrath of Wendy Oldbag. Okay, but can we get to... Oh, we can. March 22nd. On guard mansion, living room. Hmm. Sure is dark. I'll go turn on a light. The fuck? Why? Wow. So this is what a star's house looks like. Must be nice to be rich. That is a nice living room. Damn. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's find Shu, the kitty cat. Shu! <gasps> Aw, it's a baby. Look at his little face. That's a phenomenal portrait. I love it. So I guess this is Shu. Ah, what a lovely cat. Hello, Shu. Hehe. <laughs> cat seems to like pearls. The cat recognizes its dark master of the underworld. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh. Hello. May I help you with something, Mr... Oh, uh, we're lawyers. Actually, I'm Mr. Ongard's lawyer. The Masters... Then you must be Mr. Wright. Yes. Ah, it's a pleasure to meet your wonderful self. I like this guy. He he's evil, yes, and an assassin. But he's shockingly polite. Professionals have standards, damn it! I am the family butler, John Doe. Nice to meet you. Hmm. What do you know about this? I was wondering if you wouldn't mind taking a look at this. I'm afraid I cannot offer up anything special about it. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of evidence for a trial. Polite yet snotty with a touch of rude. He's a stereotypical butler, all right. That was perfectly polite. Also, oh, pardon me. Drop something. Uh, what do you think about this? I think it belongs to someone with an incredibly lacking taste. Oh, he has nothing to say. He's smart. Damn it. Okay. Well, let's talk at least. You must know all sorts of things about Mr. Ongard, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It's not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master or his affairs. Hmm, not typically butler-like, as it were. Huh. Mr. Doe. How long have you served as rest? Oh wait, isn't John Doe like the standard name for like someone who doesn't have their like who, a, a dead body who can't be identified, right? 
I think I'm remembering that right. Well, sir, I would have to say maybe about one year. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It's not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of himself and his affairs. You know, I would have thought Mr. On Guard the kind to have a maid over a butler. Yeah, he does seem like a sleazebag. It's a very cute cat you've got there. It is my duty to take care of him. The master rather fancies Shu. Wait. Why would he send us here if... There's a butler. I mean, we all know it's the fucking... It's, it's the killer. It's the guy who has Maya hostage. But I'm trying to think of, like... How Phoenix is going to figure that out. Eventually. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It's not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the family cat. Well, then I guess I don't need this piece of scrap paper anymore. And it's gone. Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. Oh, we should probably get going ourselves. Ah, uh, so young and yet already so accomplished. A master of law. There's also a lot to be proud of in being a butler, in charge of the household. Thank you for the compliment, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Now if you'll excuse me. Hmm. I don't think there is anything to be gained from here. A giant bicycle is flying through the air! Pearl, it's attached to wires. That bicycle, Pearls, is one where you don't have to pedal, and it moves on its own. Really? Wow! Sorry to disappoint you, it can't fly. Oh, that's too bad. This place looks barely lived in. What's this? There's a small door at the bottom of this bigger door, Mr. Nick. I bet it's for Mr. On Guard's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe. That, by the way, that is an adorable concept. It's like, oh man, our cat can't open the door. Let's get him his own slightly smaller door. <laughs> that's so cute. The door. It's locked tight. Well, I guess there's to, that's to keep nosy people like me from entering it. Okay, I don't think there's anything we can do here. So, back to... Colonel Affairs. Is there anything to be found here? Wow, everybody looks really busy with something or another. Hmm, they're probably strengthening the evidence for tomorrow's trial. Hey, hurry up with that, will ya? Pass that victim's list around. You gotta be kidding, there's over a hundred people on here. Um, Mr. Nick? Is Mr. Ongard really that big and bad of a criminal? Actually, Pearls, never mind. It sounds like they're working on a different case. The killer has over a hundred victims, huh? Damn. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Viola Hall. Looks like we're the only ones here. And yet, the hotel seems so busy somehow. Probably because the police team is scouring for clues about the killer. Alright. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel Hallway. Hey, city boy! How the fuck did I get in here? L Lotta, you're still here. Wrecking course! An investigative photographer eats her stars on her ability to snap up the scoop, yeah? This hotel just has that aura of mystery. Did you know that some lady was brutally murdered from across this place? Like, a couple years back? And some other incredibly bad smoker spotted it? You know, like something's always about to happen. But, do you have a camera? Wreck given. Photographers gotta have cameras out the ear like corn to be a real pro, you know? So I'm hanging around here. Speaking of camera and feeding in the mouth, do you have mine, you bread thief? Why can't you drop the thief thing already? Oh yeah, we should probably get this back to her. Oh no, I can't actually do it. Only thing I want to see is a steaming hand towel. Um, what? A steaming hand towel? Leave one for my eyes. Today just ain't a good day for my eyes to be looking at stuff. How convenient. Maybe I'll have to use that one next time you show me something. <laughs> Um, well, what do you have to say? I want to ask you about the night of the murder. What? You're really going to shell out the bucks for the info I got? Lotta, you were loitering the hall this hallway the night of the murder, were you not? Well, kind of, but... Raise yourself, Phoenix. Here it comes. I didn't exactly hang around here the entire time, you know? Followed a few stars around, got a few autographs, shook a few hands, had a soda pop with a few of them, too. 
Looks like she wasn't here the entire time that night. The security lady also wasn't in this hall like, the whole time either. I guess this means there's no one who can tell us who came and went that night. Great. So about the note that was inside your camera case. Oh, that ditty I wrote? Yeah, can I believe what you've written? You mean the stuff about On Guard shoving his manager lady onto Corda? Yeah? Oh, well, I reckon you best not be believing that. What? Look, I sort of wrote that on a whim, you know? Writing whatever came to mind. Whatever came to mind? Yeah, when you get down to it, just a lot of random bull dooters. Dooters! <laughs> oh, why is that actually kind of fun? Do, 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 do. We are the dooters. It's just the name of, like, a really charming trumpet-only band. Hey, what's with you? Why are you staring at me like my grandpa used to? Because I look like a frog? Or is it a meatball? And does this guy have any other jokes about the way I look? My guy is getting old. Hey, and why do you look like you suddenly got older, too? Or am I just shrinking here? Um, well, it has been months. Ah, my baby! My $1,600 baby! What's with that red-coated prosecutor, anyhow? The guy told me it was evidence and refused to give it back to me. Well, that's kind of how it is. Hey, hey, you're that red coat's friend, ain't you? <laughs> Leave it to the Texan to refer to him as a red coat. Just put in a few good words for me and give me back my camera. You want me to do what? Listen, nag the guy real good for about five hours and I guarantee you'll get it back. Why don't you do your own dirty work? Well, I reckon it's time for me to get going. A tabloid photographer without a camera is just a tabloid, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Keep yourself together out there, you hear? I'm coming to see you in court tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you then. And you too there, little one. Keep up the good work, okay? Okay. Don't be picky about your food now. Oh, that's kind of sweet. Okay. Make sure you do all your homework, you hear? Okay. And if you happen to find yourself a camera, make sure you bring it right to me. Would you please just leave already? Okay, so we can go to Corda's hotel room, but not on guards. Hmm. Mm. What? Mr. Nick! What is that otherworldly, ghastly moaning? I hate evil ghosts! I don't like anything that's more scary than me! I don't think it's a ghost. Maybe it's a demon? No, oh, Phoenix, that's just me. Oh, what the fu- Excuse me? What are you calling a demon, brat? Ah! Zoinks! It's the alien! <laughs> Get that fucking series away from me. Who are you calling an alien? <laughs> Proceeds to shoot you with a space gun. Oh, it's just you, Miss Old Bag. What are you doing here? What is wrong with young'uns today? I came down here to pay my respects to my poor Juan, and you're disturbing me. Okay. Um, I'm going to poke around. Wow, there are a lot of bears. Alarm clock ones, collector's editions, stuffed titties, plastic. No, don't you dare do it again. He must stay buried. There's even a few in the trash can. No, I'm getting deja vu. Now I get the feeling maybe the guy didn't really like bears. Poor teddies. No! He's back! It's hard to bear with all these problems! <laughs> Return to the depths from whence you came! The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Omnipotenti Deus Viteus! Kyrie eleison! I don't think I want to bear the trauma the last case caused me. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? You know what's wrong, Pearl. Okay. I don't think there's actually anything I can really find here. I just need to talk to her. Please talk to me about the night of the murder. Just one more time. I talked about it plenty at the trial. I was fooled, tricked, deceived by that fraud of the photographer in her note. She was loitering, loitering around here with that imbecilic look on her face. With that imbecilic look on her face? Okay, got it. Now, hold on there, you little pipsqueak. If you're going to take notes, at least make me sound better than that. Oh, all right. Now I've seen everything. 
Well, you know, I was working that night too, doing my job, minding my own business. Well, it's not like I had time to waste standing around here the whole night. That means Corda. What do you know? I was wondering if you could tell me a bit more about Mr. Corda. He was the most popular star, you know, especially where it counts in my book. I heard that he was. Oh, but I heard that he was lagging behind in the polls against Mr. Ungard. Um, well, that's just a recent thing. Bad luck and all that, you know? But, he was going to become an even bigger star than he used to be. Look, just look at this mountain of presents. It's a show of the mountain of feelings all his fans had for him. Yeah, the mountain's pretty big. Certainly nothing to shake a stick at. Mr. Nick? Hmm? What is it, girls? The presents. They're all bears, right? She's got a point. There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. Why? All of Mr. Corda's presents from his fans seem to be bears? Oh, that's because you can't think of one without thinking about bears. Bears? Why bears? Because he was gay, obviously. You don't know. When my dear Juan was training, he fought bare-handed with a bear. He refused to give in and let the bear win, but after the fight, they became friends. Wow, what a heartwarming story. Look, it's just like in those young people's dramas. I can see those two tuckered out down by the river going, <laughs> You, you sure can fight. You too, bub. You too. Did all that really happen? It's in his biography, bub. What a load of crock. Actually, it's a load of bear. So ever since then, fans have been giving him bears as presents. Yeah, nice. Bears. What the... I'm Uncle Bear, and I say it's barely 8 o'clock. What is that infernal racket? It's one of the presents going off. Sounds like it's already 8 p.m. Way past your bedtime. Ugh, that startled me. I was going to die for a second. 8 p.m. The time when the two worlds align. <laughs> Whatever she does, that like straightforward look, I feel like she's going to suddenly get incredibly serious and existential. That's the time when the award ceremony ended that night, remember? Time sure flies. Hard to believe it's been two days since the ceremony. Uh-oh. Uh, old bag, you mind getting out of here? A transceiver! Hello? Hello? This is not a phone. Maya! How is Maya? You haven't heard her, have you? It seems you are not able to fulfill your end of the bargain, Mr. Attorney. I have heard the news. So it would seem my present did you no good. No! Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! One more day. Please. All I ask is for one more day. I, I'll get a not guilty verdict for sure this time. Please. I suppose if I must. Really? Shocking. I need that acquittal more than anything else, after all. Please, please let Maya say something. I want to hear she's all right. All right. Then... A little... What's with the static all of a sudden? Hello? Hello? It seems... Bad... Connect... Can't hear you going into tunnel... Damn it, did the transceiver just suddenly break? Excuse me. Beep. What happened? I don't know. All of a sudden it became nothing but static. Ah, uh, Mystic Maya. Mystic Maya. Why did the transceiver suddenly break like that? You should probably have an electronics expert look at it. The sooner the better. Okay, you... You think that gun is real, so I'm gonna go ahead and guess you're not the, the best with electronics. Uh, is Lotta around here anywhere? Nope, I was just here. Oh, it's doing the same thing. This transceiver. Whenever we're in this room, it starts acting up and hissing static at us. I wonder if there's something someone can talk to about this. Wait, what? Oh, I remember. I know why things are acting weird in this room. We gotta move. Alright, now if I remember correctly... Hey! Welcome back, pal! I thought I'd make you a little something for dinner. That's nice. Thanks. A rich man's luxurious full-course meal. Out of a can, that is. Sorry you went through a little trouble to cook, but I don't have the time to eat. 
Oops, looks like you don't have a can opener, pal. Gotta be kidding. Here I thought he had already whipped something up. Oh, I know. There is one way I know how to be helpful. Ask me about anything you want, pal. Go ahead. Since he's here on offering, I wonder if I should try asking you about it. Okay, we've already talked to him about everything, so what we need to do... Transceiver. I recognize this technology. It's from my home planet. <laughs> oh, Mr. Rick, you should ask Mr. Scruffy Detective about that thing. What thing? Oh yeah, this thing just up and broke all of a sudden. It, it broke, pal? When I was talking to the kidnapper, it just, uh, just suddenly broke into static. Look, it sounded like this. I don't hear any static, pal. Huh? Maybe it fixed itself? That's strange. I'm sure it was making a loud static noise. I have no idea how any freaking radio device works. Hmm, maybe. Maybe what? Maybe it was electromagnetic interference, pal. One of my powers is a brain-sucking parasite. <laughs> electromagnetic interference? Electro who's a what's a in huh? Um, so what is electromagnetic interference? Something that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, when you put it that way. I understand what you're talking about. Like, for example, when a cell phone goes off next to a computer screen, the stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy and starts acting funny, right? Huh? Computer? They didn't have those 200 years ago. Um. Um, it's like when you use the dryer next to the TV and the screen starts looking weird. Oh! Yes, the TV does do that! Hmm. So that's what you're talking about. She seems amazingly happy happy at being able to understand this. So the room you were in when that tra in fuck. So the room you were in when that interference to the transceiver happened. There's gotta be something that there that's sending out very strong ra radio waves, pal. Something like, hmm, like a listening device or something. Hey, speaking of that, where were you when it happened? We were in Mr. Corda's room. The scene of the murder. What? That's it. I'm going to sneak into the precinct and get a bug sweeper. I'll meet you at the crime scene later, all right, pal? Oh, wait! Gumshoe! Oh, yeah, baby! It's investigating time! I'm on fire, pal! My fingers are itching to go! Yeah! I'm off to take some brains! No, Gumshoe, wait! No, oh, no. Oh, God, does this make us accomplices? We should be going too, Mr. Nick. Pearl, we need to think more about our situation. We just set an alien loose on the police. All right, let's go. Sure, I guess we're taking advantage of this now. Okay. Let's stay on the move. God, why can't you just give me a full list of locations? Why has it got to be this weird little maze game? Hey, you're finally here, pal. Sorry to keep you waiting. You have the, um, bug sweeper? Um, well, you see, I got Buster trying to sneak in, pal. And suddenly, I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean. So, yeah, I couldn't get one of the police bunk sweepers. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item. Hey, hey, calm down, pal. I didn't say I didn't... I didn't say I didn't get one. It's just not the police's. Wow, so this is a bug sweeper. Looks a little... broken. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh, by who? Me, of course. Uh, seeing this show brings back memories. Gumshoe, I'm impressed. Hey, don't look down on it, pal. Sure, it looks a little beat up, but I put my heart and soul into building this puppy here. Your heart and soul? Oh, I could use some of those. It'll work. Trust me, pal. It'll do the job, but... What? You can't set the sensitivity, so it's going to beep off it. Anything that gives off electromagnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? ho 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 ho! Well, anyway, since I brought it all this way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? Getting that sinking feeling again. Okay, now, I'm t now I'll tell you how to use this baby. This listening device is some other sort of bug hidden in this room, pal. So we're going to find it, right? Right. Now first, let's turn the sweeper on. Next, move the sweeper around to give the room a real thorough look-see, pal. Sweeper will let you know how strong of a signal it's picking up, so keep an eye on it, okay? Once you find something that's giving off a lot of radio waves, Press the A button to lock onto it. There's a lot of things here that's going to give off radio waves, but... So let's take a good look at anything and everything that seems suspicious, okay, pal? All right, I'm gonna go stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find the bug. Got it, pal? So 
surprise. This is this is just a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Hey, so you guys find it yet? The listening device, I mean. No, not yet. This bear's eyes. Let's see, let's see. Perfectly normal stuffed bear with some really strong radio waves. Sounds like you found a device to me, pal. Let's take this big fellow's eye out and see what we've got. <gasps> no! You can't! Such such a violent act! In front of a child, even! <laughs> Don't worry. Gumshoe's used to it. He's used to doing it with actual skulls. <laughs> I will be right back. Just another quick little break and then we'll continue. I'm back. <clears throat> Oof. Rip. Yeah, he's... I pro Did I already say it? That he's used to doing this with skulls? Fuck. No! That's... It's a miniature camera. It looks like there's more. There's a transmitter. And a timer. A, what's a what emitter? A transmitter, pal. It's a mirror that's going through the transition, and it deserves support. So what the fuck? Oh, has, we don't have it. He has to show it to us. So this tiny thing is a camera? Excuse me. Yup, it's a pinhole CCD camera, pal. It's a small, high-grade video camera, mostly used in security systems. So it's a video camera. It runs on a battery, which comes with it in a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. This is only a camera part here, pal. The tape recorder with the tape inside it is somewhere else. Somewhere else? Footage is changed into radio waves, and then it's sent to that recorder. So it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Hey, you know, you're right. Good on you, Pearls. For someone who didn't know what freaking electromagnetic ri waves were a minute ago, you're doing pretty good with this. Let's see. So, what is a transmitter? It's a device that sends the footage the camera took to a specific location. It's like a video version of a listening device, pal. Looks like it's attached to a small clock-like thing. How did you get a clock from that? Oh, that's a timer, pal. You set it to turn the camera on and record at a certain time with it. Like a VCR of sorts. Does anyone even remember what that is? A VCR? Video console for recording? I don't even know if that's what it stands for, but it makes sense. Yep, let's see. This looks like it was set to start at 8 p.m. and go for one hour. 8 p.m. That's time the award ceremony ended. There's no date set, so we're recording every night, I guess. Mr. Detective! How long has this bear been here? Um, I'm pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. Then, then maybe... Maybe this camera caught the murder on tape! What? If you think about the angle the bear is at, it's bound to have had a clear shot of the whole crime, pal. Changes the footage taken by the spy camera into radio waves and transmits the data. 
God. So there was a camera in this bear's eye. It was disguised as a present. And I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal. It's pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But who gave Mr. Cora this present? I, uh, don't know, pal. What? Which means that someone out there's got a video of what happened here that night. Isn't there any way we can find out who that person is? It's impossible, pal. Radio waves can be sent almost anywhere, so there's no real way to find out. Oh. Is there really no way to find out? Hmm. I got it! What? Hey, pal, let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. What are you going to do? I'm gonna go around to the electronic shop and see if I can find out who bought this. But that's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. Leave it to me. You and I have to search all night. I'll find your man, pal. Okay, we'll lend it to him for now. Oh yeah, baby, it's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. On the trigger. Stick him up. Oh wait, you're on my side. Yeah! <laughs> He's gone. Yeah. Mr. Scruffy Detective sure is a nice man. He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Maya's sake. It's a mystery how you always manage to do things in the most inefficient ways, right? Ah. Ah. You'll have to excuse me. I heard your conversation just now. Edgeworth! What are you doing here? The rescue team has been created and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic. We have to move forward, one step at a time. I see. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. We still have to find her. Hmm. There's a spy camera hidden inside this stuffed animal, huh? You are one lucky man, right? Hmm? Do you know this stuffed bear, little girl? Um, I have no idea. Hmm. Of course not. The maker of this bear is a very expensive luxury brand from overseas. It's completely handmade, and only a small number of these are exported here. What? Camera and transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with him are dead ends. Things like those can be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. Can you really do that? Mr. Nick, can he really? Well, I guess so. Hmm, it's 9 p.m. I think I'd still make it in time. I'll be taking this for now. Proceeds to hoist entire bear over his shoulder. I'm sure you have other things you have to do. Stuffed bear snatched up by Edgeworth. Hold the door open for me, right, if you don't mind. See you soon, right? <laughs> My god. If only he'd carried me like that. <laughs> Wait! What? Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. But besides that, right, until court reconvenes tomorrow, you should concern yourself with this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Corda? real killer. Do you really still think it was Adrian Andrews? To be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a little time left. Find the truth, right? Everything begins with the truth. Juan Cord is a real killer. Miss Andrews passed. A kidnapper whose sole condition is an acquittal for Mr. On Guard. This card, Shelly the Killer. I wonder if the Killer comes back in some of the later games. I still haven't played the uh, the later trilogies with, with Apollo and Athena. Maya, the only way I can save you now is to find all the answers to this case tonight. I don't understand what your real intentions are, Edgeworth. But as you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. To be continued once again. <sighs> Tired. We'll keep going. It's not going to be like last time, where I have to end early for no real reason. Oh, no, wait. That was a different case. So is it still the same date in game, or is it the next day and we can talk to On Guard? Nope. Still night at night. It's past 9 p.m. already, isn't it? I wonder. I wonder if Mr. Edgeworth has already found Mystic Maya. These things take time. I'd say probably not. The police are professionals, Pearl. They'll find her, so don't you worry. And if we can win a not guilty verdict tomorrow, then everything will be okay. You're right. Okay. Wow, it's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? 
Yeah, it's past 9 p.m. already. But we still have some things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. There's still the matter of the secret Mr. Corda held about Mr. Ongard. Miss Andrew's real intention. Tensions. Those are two things I must know tonight. But aren't visiting hours over at the detention center? Hmm. I'm sure we'll think of something, Pearls. Don't you worry. Okay. Let's think. What can we possibly do? Uh-oh. Hey, wait! What is it, Whippersnapper? All I know is nothing that has anything to do with you is ever good. Like just now, I was handed this strange device for who knows what reason. And I was told to use it to search the whole hotel. That's the bug sweeper, isn't it? The one comes to me. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care. But the request came from Edgy Poo, so... Edgeworth? And he said... If you feel angry, direct your anger at that unsophisticated lawyer. Well, I'm going to feel free to direct all my anger towards you. Ah, gee, thanks a bundle, Edgeworth. What a pal you are. I think something just happened outside? I think it's fine. They'd call for me if they needed me. This is absolutely top secret, so you had better keep it to yourselves. I heard they found a spy camera hidden in one of the presents. Yeah, we're the ones who found it. Hmm, very interesting. I'm sure it was, you know, just catch poor Juan in the middle of a scandalous meeting. Scandalous? What's that? It means, well, you know, that gossip that's been going around about my dear Juan. Oh, you mean that thing about Miss Andrews? I'm sure she must have had some reason for getting close to Mr. Corda. Can we not talk about this in front of the eight-year-old girl? I'll let you in on another secret, young'un. I know who planted that spy camera. No, you don't. You're gonna say who you think it is, and then you're gonna be angry, because we know that you probably aren't right. It was that obnoxious, puffy-haired photographer girl. The nerve of some people. Spying on people by herself. As if I wouldn't want to see her myself, too. <laughs> that is not the complaint I expected. Wow, the alien actually admitted her true intentions for a change. I don't know what you're thinking exactly, but I can bet that it's nothing good. I didn't say anything. So, you want to know about Juan and that manager, right? Actually, as I hear it, there was something about a refreshing pair, those two. Oh? I tell you, Juan really welcomed that manager with open arms, I heard. That manager? Who are you talking about? You don't know? That manager woman Juan had. It's a shame she killed herself, though. Oh, you're talking about Miss Celestin Pax. Miss Andrew's mentor, right? Yes, yes, that's the one. That's Celeste girl. She was supposed to get married, you know. Married? You mean to Mr. Corda? Ah, uh, really? You young kids today don't know anything, do you? That girl Celeste killed herself three days after their marriage announcement. You are fucking twisted. Like what? Why you gotta say it like that? Three days after their marriage announcement? What in the... Why would Miss Impax want to kill herself? She was going to get married! Well, that's because she was thrown away, you see, by Juan. What? But they were going to get married, right? They promised each other, right? They held a grand announcement session, but three days later, Juan suddenly canceled their marriage. Is that true? It was in the weekly magazines. But why? Why did he do that? That was not in the magazines, unfortunately. I see. That night, after Juan called off the wedding, that manager Celeste killed herself. Oh, right, that's old bag. How terrible. I wonder what hap- I wonder what happened between those two. What the fuck is going on? We really are just scratching the surface of this mess. On that night, there must have been at least a few hundred people here. Hmm, I guess the police are done with their questioning and investigating. It looks like things here in the lobby have finally calmed down. Alright, what the fuck are we doing? I think Edward said he'd be in criminal affairs. It feels sort of tense in here, doesn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it does. I wonder if something happened. You're Mr. Ungard's lawyer, right? Ah, yes, sir. Well, we finally found just the person we've been looking for. A real decisive witness. A decisive witness? You mean for the Ungard case? We're taking the witness's statement right now. You gotta hand it to Mr. Edgeworth. What's Edgeworth up to now? Who is the witness? I think you know this person quite well, Mr. Lawyer. Mr. Nick? Between the kidnapper's demand and now this, I can't see any way to win here. Oh yeah, Mr. Edgeworth wanted me to tell you something. He did? 
Even though visiting hours are long over at the detention center, he wanted me to grant you special commission, so there you go. Oh! What? I've already called them, so they know. Go on, go talk to your heart's content. Thank you very much. This is such good news, Mr. Nick. Go talk to your heart's content? It sounds like the police are pretty sure they have tomorrow's trial in the bag. Hmm. I'm sure they must have transferred Miss Andrews here by now. So that means that both Mr. Ongard and Miss Andrews are in this detention center. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? Uh... You are the one I know the least about. And I'm starting to have doubts about, too. Dude, it's Mr. Wright. I hope you can get me off the hook tomorrow, and I'm counting on you. I hope so, too. Edgeworth just dropped a bombshell on me by saying... That Juan Corridor was killed by an assassin, and that the assassin's client is this man, Matt Ongard. What's wrong? Mr. Ongard, there's something I must know with 100% certainty. Hmm, you seem kind of different. You're totally not like your usual lawyer dude self. What do you know about this, you little shit? I'm kind of scared to show him this card. What's wrong, dude? Oh, um, so about this picture card. Have you ever seen this before? Nope, never saw it before in my life, dude. I don't think he's lying. Or is he? And again, it looked like he gasped just now. Maybe I'm seeing things? Um, about the press conference. You mean the one where Juan was gonna dress up as the Nickel Samurai? Yeah, I heard a little more about it from Miss Andrews. It looked like somehow Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Could you please fill me in on what this secret is? Please. Oh, it's a big one. Five! I knew this was coming. Mr. Nick, don't tell me. Cyclox. You said a secret, right? But I don't have any idea what it is. Do you, dude? Do you know about Mr. Corda and Miss Andrews' relationship? Well, it's all over the tabloids, dude. Uh, but I don't know any of the details, if that's what you mean. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? I don't care what Juan did with his life. Miss Andrews, she had a purpose in mind when she started seeing Mr. Corda. Her mentor was Mr. Corda's manager. Miss Andrews was going to get Miss Celeste's impacts and notes. Fuck. And Miss Andrews was going to get Miss Celeste's impacts and suicide note. Yeah. Celeste. Does that jog any memories? Dude, I suddenly just got totally hungry. You up for a pizza? My treat. Dude, I could go for a pizza right now. Uh, Mr. Nick, what's a pizza? Oh my god. Pearls, we are about to change your life. Let's go eat one later, okay? Uh, I got cut off by the pizza dude at the shop. It's too bad. Well, how about we get our minds off of this topic and talk about something else, okay? Mr. On Guard. You connected to Miss Impact's suicide in some way. Let's see what we can find out by poking around. We're probably not going to get anything out of it, but I can try. Hmm. Now let's see what the secret of yours is. What if Mr. Corda had been successful in his plan? What would he have disclosed? I told you before, dude. I don't know. I don't know anything about Juan, okay? Look, Mr. Wright, I can keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, but I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole time that night. Oh, come on, all I did was take a nap. Don't lie to me. Huh? I know you paid close attention to Mr. Cor- Okay. So I don't think we have anything that indicates that. Doesn't look like Mr. Scruffy Detective is here. Well, he's out there with that camera asking around at all the electronics stores. <coughs> <coughs> the fuck was that? <coughs> oh, holy shit, I feel way better. Mm. Get some water. I'll make some salad for him for dinner. Looks like Pearls, Pearls really appreciates what Gumshoe is doing for us.
Uh, Mr. Nick? Hmm? Yes? Where's the lettuce? I don't think I've ever bought lettuce before. Aw, huh. guess I have to give up on making a salad then. Guess the lack of lettuce is kind of a problem. Okay. Weird. This is the first time in a hot minute that I'm actually stumped. Hmm. Guess we haven't been here in a bit. Looks like no one else is around. Uh, what happened to that person with the stuffed teddy face? Oh, she must mean that butler with the stitches in his face. Shoo! Meow. Oh, there you are. I guess you're still awake, huh, Shoo? <laughs> Come on, let's play. I wonder if that butler, Mr. Doe, is already asleep or not. Hmm. How's this door looking? Small door at the bottom of the bigger door. Hmm. Still locked. Flying bicycle. What about the couch? Maybe there's something hidden there. Spare change? It's a very comfortable and spacious lounge set. I wonder if famous stars drop by and sit around and have a good time. In any case, I don't really belong here, do I? Ugh, who's with me and feeling inferior today? <laughs> Pearls has no idea. Oh, there's a giant cooking hearth here. It's actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Nick? You know, I've never actually seen a hearth before, come to think of it. You should come and visit Fay Manor, then. I'll show you one when you do. Hmm. We're missing something. Something big. Oh, maybe if I go back to the detention center, I can talk directly to Adrian instead. There we go. Uh, hello. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry to be visiting at such a late hour. But there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. Me? I thought your client was mad. I'm sure Miss Andrews knows something different. Something. She can't be clueless about this secret Mr. Corda had on Mr. On Guard. I'd like to ask you about Matt On Guard, if you don't mind. Mr. Wright, you still don't know, do you? The real him, I mean. You seem to bear a lot of resentment towards Mr. On Guard. If that's the case, then why did you become his manager? <clears throat> and why would you become intimate with his rival? That has nothing to do with this case. Nothing. About Miss Celeste and Pax. I have finally put her death behind me. And now, thanks to you, it's all come back to the surface. Thanks a lot, dick. I'm sorry. Yes, I was shocked by her suicide. It's true that when I heard the rumor that Juan was the one who had hidden her suicide note, I began to draw close to him. I wanted to get her suicide note back and to burn it. I wanted to burn it? But why? I didn't want it to spread like just another piece of gossip. But I never held any murderous intent towards Juan. I would never do something so stupid. Suicide note, huh? I wonder what it said. Why did you try to frame Mr. Ongard? It's simple. Because he's the killer, that's why. Isn't it the duty of every good citizen to inform the police? But there had to be another way. Police are excellent at doing their jobs, so they'd figure it out, right? Yes, they're so good that they couldn't figure out the real truth behind Celeste's death. Miss Andrews! Um, I know you're not the type of person to do something without a reason. So please, tell me why you did what you did. Revenge. Huh? Did you say something just now? Revenge. Ooh, simple lock. A psych lock, huh? Don't you understand yet? You're not my lawyer. To be honest, you're more like my enemy. But... I'm sure I just heard Miss Andrews say, revenge. Hmm. Take that! Hmm? Why only a one... a singular psych lock this late in the game? Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. Ongar for the murder? I've already told you countless times. It's because I thought Matt was a killer. No, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. On Guard. Miss Andrews, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said something earlier. You said revenge. 
So you were saying I was taking my revenge out on Matt, and that's why. What an absurd idea. I don't have anything I want to take revenge for. Miss Andrews, a woman who lives by being dependent on other people. There's something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. Is it Celeste? Celeste. There's only one catalyst that causes such strong feelings and even revenge. And that is Miss Impax's suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who hid her suicide note was also Juan. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned him. Yet. For you to hate Mr. On Guard would mean that he has he must have some relation to Miss Impax and her suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Matt? Uh, that I cannot do. Uh-oh. Hmm. Who would know about that? Oh, old bag. I just hope that she has anything valuable to say. Hmm. Oh, maybe if we show her the suicide report, she'll consider it. And it'll open up a new text thing. Hmm, not the Nicholas Samurai. Press conference, lot of camera, clipping. Oh! Here. Well then, how about I tell you my measurements? Why? What? What, is that like a 9mm or something? What? What measurements? I get it, you've been told to scout this area. Um... Oh... Anything to say about her? I don't have any... Oh, great. She'll probably talk about Juan, though. She'll definitely talk about Juan. Really? What about Matt? Nothing. Adrian, maybe. Mm. Attempted suicide? No. Report his knife, a lot of his photo. Crime scene? No. I thought she might get excited to have like the last picture of her of the guy she liked. Let's go back to the room. Maybe something's changed there. Or there's something else I can find that I didn't because I was moving too fast. Let's see. Is something. Where would it be? Dinner. All the beds and the bears. This glass of juice. Well, Samurai's costume wasn't here. This recorder went so far just to say bad things about Mr. Ongard. It was a press conference, so he had to go in costume. Weren't Mr. Ongard and Mr. Corner friends? They weren't friends. They couldn't be friends because they were rivals. So a rival is someone who is a strong enemy. Hmm. Trying to think. There's that annoying bear clock. No, not this again. Stay away! That covers pretty much all the bears, then. There are all sorts of things in this refrigerator. Hmm. They're all vest vegetable juices. I guess it must have been a real health nut. Oh! There's a bead, some ketchup, and a bottle of strawberry jam, too. Maybe red was his favorite color. Weird. doing here? 
don't think there's anything to find here. Hmm. Let's try checking some of the other areas. We haven't been to the police department in a bit. No, nothing's changed. So what do we do? I could check his house again, I guess. Seems maybe there's a spot that I didn't examine properly. Oh, wait a minute. There's another door over there. You shouldn't go wandering off over there, Mr. Nick. Yes, Pearls. Now I know how Maya feels when I tell her to stop playing around. Huh, there are masks here. Yeah, that one in the middle was the Steel Samurai. The ones next to that are Pink Princess and the Evil Magistrate. They fought many battles against the backdrop of Neo Old Tokyo. Wow, you really know a lot about the Steel Samurai, Mr. Nick. I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know more about that show than a kid. That is kind of tragic. Not for Nick, for Pearls. Okay, maybe I need to go to the detention center and present stuff to people. I'm gonna talk with Adrian, because I'm pretty sure Matt is just a dead end for now. We didn't actually talk to her, did we? Nope, I did. This can finally expose Matt's true nature to the world. His true nature? I don't know why she's saying that, but not telling me what his true nature is. If it were me, I think I'd be happy to finally get that kind of thing off my chest. Oh, you tell her about this. It was near Juan's dead body. I I noticed it when I went to fill his to fill the glass. And then when I realized that Juan was dead, I completely panicked. That's when I must have unconsciously picked this card up and put it into my pocket. As for why, I simply don't know. No, nothing. Are you just asking about Celeste directly? Celeste was my mentor. She was a strong woman. She wouldn't kill herself over any old trifling matter. So? You have some ideas as why she killed herself? Yes, I suppose. Would you like to share the class? Nope, I guess not. Um... Tell me about Matt, I guess. Miss Andrews? If things have come to this, I have nothing left to say about that man. Not one word. Juan, then? You're really not giving me option. He is a very prideful man, or rather was. He absolutely had to compete with Matt in everything, no matter what it was. He really was such an idiot. Miss Andrews? Well, I guess maybe all stars are like that, never giving any thought to other people's feelings. D do I have to show her, like, su I'm getting desperate, chat. I genuinely don't know what to do. Stop it! Oh, God. I... There is no excuse for this. I can only say I'm sorry. I feel fucking horrible. I don't want to remember the hopelessness and the despair I felt back then. Hurry up and put that away, Mr. Nick! I'm so sorry. Literally, what do I do? Um, I guess I could leave and try and poke around with Matt a bit. Pearls, what do you think we should do? It's the real person who killed Mr. Corridor was... An assassin! Mr. Shelley the killer, right? The card Miss Andrews found at the crime scene seems to be proof of that. But if that's the question, then a new question comes to mind. Who was the one that hired the killer to begin with? Who was his client? You mean, who asked for the murder? That person didn't want to dirty their own hands and blood. But whoever this client is, they're still a killer. Who? Who could have hired the assassin? Do you think it was Miss Andrews? I wonder. If she was a client, then why go through the effort to stab the knife into the corpse herself? If Miss Andrews wasn't the client, then, no, it can't be. Not on guard himself? Oh, you think? <gasps> if Mr. Lingard really did hire the assassin... He is not innocent at all. Far from it. He would be guilty of the crime. But it can't be Mr. Lingard, right? I mean, when we first talked with him... Mr. Lingard, I'd like to ask you one more question. Did you kill Mr. Juan Cuarta? Alright, just so we're clear, dude, I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Juan Cuarta, okay? I didn't see any Cyclops at that time. Actually, that reminds me. Did you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something Miss Andrews said at the trial today. She said something interesting. She did? 
Um, so what is this interesting thing? Oh, that's right. You didn't hear it, did you, Pearls? I wanted to bet everything on the Jammin' Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. It looked like somehow Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Mr. On Guard's secret? What is a secret? I don't know yet. For now, let's think about it this way. Mr. Corda was going to reveal this secret. And that means... Mr. On Guard had plenty of motive to have Mr. Corda silenced. Which means we have to meet with Mr. On Guard. There's no way around it now. Okay, so I do have to keep talking with him. Let's see if we can't get any more info out of him. Oh, duh! I should show him Celeste! Ask if he knows anything about her. Mr. On Guard? Dude, I know I asked you to be my lawyer and all, but I don't think I have to tell you anything and everything. Um, what do you mean by that? It just means I don't have to tell you anything and everything, dude. Get to show him this card. Have you ever seen this before? Nope, never saw it before in my life, dude. I don't think he's lying. Where is he? And again, he looks like he gasped just now. Maybe I've seen things. Ooh, here's one. Hey, tell us about your butler. About this person. He's... He's your butler, Mr. Doe, right? We met at your mansion. Oh. Yes, that's right. He's a pretty cool dude who can do lots of things for me. He takes real good care of me. I have fucking nothing! Mr. Ongard? Dude. He's not talking. Let me try the Magatama again. Maybe I could do that and I'm just not picking up on the clues. Five of them. I don't know if we have enough. That's secret. Let's see what the secret of yours is. Told you before, dude. I don't know. Look, Mr. Rat, I keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, but I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole time. I mean, come on, I was in the middle of a nap. Don't lie to me. I you paid close attention to Mr. Corda, especially on that night. I don't fucking know. Is it because of the... this? Nope. Nope. Snort while I have a good laugh. Mm. I don't know what I'm doing! That's a very nice transceiver, dude. I'm kind of an expert in gadgety things. Why does that... Why does what he just said give me a sinking feeling? Not everything about this guy is sketch as fuck. Oh! Something triggered. I don't know what it was, but it did. Oh! Mr. Wright, please, you have to help me. Uh-oh. <gasps> Mr. Powers? What happened? Why are you here? I, uh, you see, I got roped into this somehow. What? And now I'm going to testify at tomorrow's trial. This is the decisive witness is Mr. Powers? I was talking with the detective until a little while ago, and I was on my way home. And all of a sudden, you there, you're under arrest, and I was brought back here. Oh, right, uh, Big the Cat, that's it. They said my face and whole self in general looked suspicious or something. That's just profiling. I guess I could see how they thought you looked suspicious. I'm just a normal guy on an exercise show for kids. Is that a crime? What the heck's going on with you? So about this testimony you're giving, what are you going to talk about? Uh, I really don't know yet. That's a good portrait for him. But it sounds like I saw something pretty important from what they tell me. You saw something important? What was it? 
Oh, uh, well, the detective told me not to talk about it. You can't tell anyone, and especially not that lawyer. Or we'll kill Froggy. So you know what I gotta do? I gotta keep my big mouth shut. What do you th Who do you think is that lawyer the detective was talking about? I'm gonna take a wild guess and say it's me. Yeah, you got it. Mr. Nick! Mr. Maya and myself are your only two allies in this whole world, but it's alright. Ouch. I don't really have a lot of friends, do I? This is going to do a lot of damage to Matt, you know. Cause he's got the refreshing like a spring breeze image going. What does he really like? Well, let's see. Matt's always been kind of a player with women. Gross. You never really turn a pretty face away, if you know what I mean. He'd always say it's just a game to justify himself. What? Oh, horrible! That's unforgivable! Oh, uh, sorry. Didn't mean to offend you. But you know, he said once that there's only one person in the world who won't swoon over me. One person who wouldn't swoon over him? His manager, you know, Ms. Adrian Andrews. Why is Mr. Power suddenly looking kind of energetic? Oh, you see, I'm actually a sucker for gossip. I mean, celebrities in their world have this dazzling sort of image, right? Dazzling sort of image? Aren't you a part of that dazzle, Mr. Powers? No, I'm more of a hairy, sweaty, smelly, brutish kind of guy, you see. But it's okay, really. I get to hear plenty of gossip about a lot of the other stars around me as things happen. Well, that's true. Oh, hey, so did you hear about this yet? About Miss Andrews' mentor and her suicide? You mean Miss Impacts? We heard some- We heard something about her- how her wedding was cancelled. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought about it a little the other day, about that mysterious death. Hey, Mr. Wright, why don't you ask me about that? Go on, go ahead. Let's discuss more death in front of this small child. Mr. Powers is so charged up, his skin is practically glowing with electricity. <laughs> Wait, isn't there a fucking- Oh my god, he looks like the green dude from Street Fighter. Oh, I don't know his name. Hey, so have you heard this? Celeste left a suicide note. And they say that Juan wouldn't hit it. We heard about that in court today. But there wasn't any actual proof that she'd left a note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on that note. You know, something about suicide? Something bad for Juan, that is. Something bad for Mr. Corda? I mean, why else would he hide it? Why do you figure so? Well, before she died, Celeste talked with a few of her friends. And she said, it looks like I got caught up with a truly insidious man. A truly insidious man? Did she mean Mr. Corda by that? Well, there's no one else that fits the bill, right? And that would be reason enough for him to hide the suicide note. I see. That's some good info. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Honkart and Miss Andrews, they're both at the detention center right now. There's still things I don't understand or know about, I'm sure. I have to get the two of them to tell me everything. Hmm? Mr. Nick, your phone! Hey, that's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? I don't like the sound of this ringtone right now. It sounds kind of ominous. Not really. It sounds way too goofy and jolly. Yeah, I know. Beep. Hello? We're in trouble now, pal. The entire world's, world's about to explode. What? Oh, well, I'll be back at the office real soon. What's wrong? Something really unexpected just happened. Mr. Edgeworth, he... Edgeworth? Anyway, hurry up and get back to the office, pal. I don't know what's going on anymore, but... Beep. Hello? Fuck it off. What's going on, Mr. Nick? Gumshoe said we need to get back to the office right away. Then we should hurry back. I'm scared to go back. What are you talking about? Mr. Nick, pull yourself together. Um... Maybe it'll be good news. Somehow, I doubt that. Alright. I guess that's the next stage in this whole little thing. Ugh. Spit on the monitor. What took you so long, pal? Mr. Edgewood couldn't stick around forever and had to go. Well, what happened? We got him. We know who bought that spy camera. Huh? This quickly? This bear's what gave him away, pal. The bear. I figured it out, pal. I figured out we should have been looking into the bear instead of the camera. Uh, wasn't it Mr. Ed Shh, Pearls. And? Go on. 
There's only one person who bought one of those bears related to this crime. Who is it? Who would be so rude as to spy on another person in their room? Matt Oncott. Oncott! He did it! <laughs> huh? Matt Oncott, your client, that's who, pal. Here I thought things couldn't get any worse. Stuffed bear. Are you sure you heard right? The person who bought this bear was... I heard it from the department store clerk, pal. This is a credit card receipt for the purchase. It was $3,800, pal. That's an exact match, match to the price of that stuffed bear. Receipt? That's all you have? No, it's not just a repeat receipt, pal. The store clerk said so himself. He told me, I'm sure I sold that bear to Mr. Ongard. And I sucked his brains, and now I can mimic his voice perfectly. I mean, the clerk even got Mr. Ongard's autograph out of it, pal. So I'm sure the person that bought that stuffed bear was Mr. Ongard himself. My... my sight is failing me. This can't be... Proof Ongard bought a stuffed bear identical to one in evidence. So what about the spy camera we found? Well, that was a dead end, pal. I mean, you can get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess I can give these back to you for you to file away as evidence. Good to know. Good to know. I know you don't want to give up, pal. I never thought. I didn't think it was possible. The person who put the spy camera in Juan Corda's room was Matt Ongard. Why? Why would Mr. Ongard do something like this? Well, I bet it was the cat Miss Andrews and Mr. Corda on one of their rendezvous. I bet is not good enough for me. I have to know the absolute truth behind this camera. Are you going to go see him? Mr. Ongard, I mean. Yes. I, I'm scared, Mr. Nick. I wonder. I wonder what we'll find out next. I'm scared myself, but I have to put on a good face for pearls. Matt Ongard, what in the world have you done? Oh boy. Only one option now. You're working really late, you know. It's already past 10 p.m., my dude. I think it's time you told me the truth. Relax. Don't you know that ignorance is bliss? Enjoy your stupidity while you can, Phoenix, right? Because before you know it, it's going to be up and gone. <coughs> but if you really want to know, let's talk. Spill the beans like I'm about to spill your guts, boy. Alright, let's take him apart piece by piece. That's secret. Now let's see what a secret of yours is. What if Mr. Corda had been successful in his plan? What would, he have been, what would he have disclosed? I told you before, dude. I don't know. I don't know anything about Juan, okay? Look, Mr. Wright, I can keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, dude. But I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole time that night. I mean, come on, I was in the middle of a nap. Don't lie to me. Huh? I know you paid close attention to Mr. Corda, especially on that night. Oh, we have a very small gauge. Busted. Someone used this camera to secretly film Mr. Corda's room the night of the murder. Secretly film? What? and sent the images the camera took with this transmitter. Wow, dude, where is this camera you're talking about hidden? There's stuff there. The one you bought. The spy camera was hidden in this bear's eye. A bear that was supposed to be a present from a fan. He's starting to break. <laughs> I guess Juan had a few of those kinds of fans too, huh, dude? Actually, I wouldn't say this bear was a present from a fan. Hmm, sure, dude? Who else could it be from? person who gave this bear to Mr. Cord, huh? It was you. Mr. Ongard, don't you know this bear from somewhere? I don't think I've ever met Mr. Bear before, dude. Oh, but he says he knows you. How could you forget such a great friend? What is going on? What else did the bear tell you, dude? Tell me, Phoenix. What else did he tell you? He says that the one who put the camera in his eyes was you, Mr. Ongard. Because I didn't know how you work in court, I think I was in some serious trouble. Come on, this is all a joke, right, dude? You're just pulling my leg. Looks like you're not ready to give up your secrets yet. Well, do you have any proof you want to show me first? There's proof that it was you who put the camera inside the bear. The bear's testimony! <laughs> Take that! 
I have here one credit card receipt, Mr. Ongard. It's from when you bought that stuffed bear. Dude, all you can tell from this is that I spent $3,800. I go to that department store all the time, okay? This 3800 This could be the toothbrush I bought that one time. A $3,800 toothbrush? <laughs> it's ivory. It's got elephant hair for bristles. And I'm a piece of shit. What about it? Ew, elephant hair. Is that what rich people use nowadays? Anyway, the store clerk clearly remembers you and your purchase. After all, you even gave him an autograph, did you not? Dude, you should have said that earlier. I would have totally confessed by now. Uh, so can I ask you one thing? Yes? You're my lawyer, right, dude? So if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like that? Because if I don't know the truth, I can't help you. Sounds more like stupid lawyer talk to me. Hey, let's stop talking about this, okay? No, not yet. I haven't asked why you set up the camera yet. And what your secret is. Of course, it would be strictly confidential. So, what are you gonna do now? I'm gonna find out what I want to know, because I must. The reason you hid this camera in Mr. Corda's room and filmed it in secret is... Uh... Change the switch taken by spy camera into radio waves and transmits the data. Data. If I mess this up, I have to start over. Or... We're going straight in saying that he... hired an assassin. I think it's gonna be this, though. Because that way it could be recorded. No, fuck. Ugh, oh, and he has so many animations to this, too. Ugh. Okay, I'll save after we break the second one so this can be done a bit faster. Time's starting to run short for deck. First, the camera. Then the bear. It was you who sent in the bear. And we have proof because you left a receipt and were recognized. Okay, so what is he asking for? Uh, we need the truth, right? Why we set- why did he set up the camera? Secret is, of course, it would be strictly confidential. What are you going to do now? I'm going to find out what I want to know, because I must. I filmed it in secret is- okay, so we're not saying that he's- he hired Shelly to kill her yet. We're saying that he had a reason to film him. Probably this? You wanted to find out what the plan was for the stage show? Oh, or are we saying it's because of the fucking scandal? Oh, I forgot to save during the text. Damn it. <clears throat> well, there goes nothing. Aha! Oh, I can't save during this text. Okay, that sucks. There's a rumor going around. Miss Andrews and Mr. Corda were having secret meetings. You, who was keeping tabs on Mr. Corda, you are going to reveal this as a fact and turn it into a scandal. Isn't that right? Dude, you can be such a moron. Huh? Oh man, Mr. Lawyer, dude, that kind of scandal. That's the good stuff. That's what we in the industry call juicy. The good stuff? Juicy? Look, we can get publicity without spending a penny with that kind of stuff. I mean, if people stop paying attention to us, then it'd be the end, dude. Too bad that wasn't your intention. What are you talking about? I wish a reason for spying was something so innocent, but it wasn't. You didn't spy on Mr. Corda because of Miss Andrews. There's only one reason I can think of for you to do such a thing. The really, real reason you set up that camera in Mr. Corda's room. The murder. Oh, I hope. Yes! Okay! We still got two more locks, though. What is this card? Uh, I've never seen it before. Maybe he doesn't know about this card. There's a certain man's calling card. The man's name is Shelly the Killer. 
and I'm sure you know him, don't you? Shelly the Killer. That's ridiculous! Why would I know some shady scumbag like him? I really don't know him. Why are you acting so jumpy all of a sudden? Um... This is it. I'm finally starting to get to the truth. I can't afford to make any more mistakes now. Mr. Matt Ongard, I know why you know Mr. The Killer. It's because you're his client. Since you're the one who set up that camera, that means you knew. You knew exactly what was going to happen in that room. So how? How would you know something like that? Because you're his client. That's why. You hired Shelly the Killer to assassinate Mr. Juan Corrida. The real mastermind behind this whole murder is you, Matt On Guard. Here I was, trying to be a good boy for you, dude. I thought if you didn't know, you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. And that's what I thought, anyway. Mr. Onguard, you really did hire. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna consult myself, okay? Wait, huh? Consult myself? Well, I guess it's probably about time, anyway. About time for what? I think it's time for you to meet him now, Mr. Lawyer Dude. How do you do, Mr. Lawyer? I'm Matt Omgard. That's right, I'm a fucking anime villain! <sighs> My fucking god. He looks so different. It's really well done. And like, they played it pretty cleverly by having him already be like a cartoon hero with the freaking hair floop over his face. That actually made it seem much less sketchy. Well done, Mr. Wright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. You really... So you are Shelly the Killer's client. You didn't really think I would dirty my own hands in this, did you? What do you mean? And that woman. Adrian was quite brave herself, trying to stick the crime on me. I didn't think she had it in her. But all I care about is that Juan is dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? He says, with the camera staring directly at him. That's... you're lying! What a terrible... It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on and let us grown-ups talk about more adult things. But why? Why did you hide the video camera and... The weakling soon believes the words of others, just like that pathetic Adrian. He knew about Miss Andrew's secret. I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone, least of all assassins. What? Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding the sinful deed over their heads. A superstar like me? How much do you think I'm worth? Can I guess? It's certainly enough to get a bottle of vintage orange juice and a wine glass in a prison cell. And that's why? Yes, that's where the video comes in. It's got his face and the crime scene recorded on it, preserved for all time. With that, I can keep him at bay. And even blackmail him if I want. That's right. That video is my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up and I can. Good enough of an answer for you, little girl. You little shit. Why? Why would you kill Mr. Corrida? Because he was about to sling so much dung onto my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Corrida had been able to give it, then Mr. Ongard's secret would have... Oh, uh, well, that's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know. I had no interest in doing it, really. But bit by bit, it crept up on me. And then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. <laughs> Excuse me. And that's... that's how Mr. Corda ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used. Used and thrown away. 
put on a sweet, innocent face and people will swallow anything you feed them. Adrian fell for it. The assassin, too. Oh, and how can I forget? Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone, all working their butts off for me. Matt on guard. Oh, did that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown awfully quiet. How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? When we first met, I asked if you had killed Juan Corda. You answered very clearly that you hadn't killed anyone. Hey now, I never told you any lies. The person who did the killing was that the killer guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cat nap in my room. You. You. You killed Mr. Corda. <laughs> I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. Oh, but too bad. You can't. You're my lawyer after all, aren't you? You could always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? Oh, but you can't, can you? That would be the one thing you absolutely can't do. This little fucking slime ball. Mystic Maya! You wouldn't want to test a killer. He's a man of his word, or so I hear. You could end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out if you lose. You scoundrel. So if I were you, Mr. Wright Esquire, I think I would give it my all tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win resolution. I'll get you for this! That's such a cliché phrase. Juan said something just like that, if memory serves. Of course, well, we all know how well things turned out for him, don't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Maya! Maya, what am I supposed to do? And now, now you finally found it. Oh! The fuck did you... The starting line of this case. Edgeworth. I don't care for the horrid atmosphere here. Let's return to the precinct. Thanks, Edgeworth. We appreciate you. Well, right. What are you going to do if you plan on changing your strategy? No! We can't do that! That's right. He's holding Maya hostage. What should I do? That's not something I can answer for you. Mr. Edgeworth! Right. Only you can decide where to go from here. One year ago, at that time, I didn't truly understand what a prosecutor was. And that is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't stand in a court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. My turn? What is this thing called a lawyer? What can you do as one? You must find the answer, and you must find it on your own. Oh, this case is so good! I'm a lawyer, but to fight for someone who is clearly a killer. That on guard, that man is really... Ugh. It doesn't matter who. Every person deserves a proper defense and a fair trial. Isn't that the basis of our judicial system? Proper defense? But what exactly is that? Is it where a lawyer forcibly and blindly gets an acquittal through shouting and trickery? I don't think you of all pe people should say such a thing. Isn't that exactly how you have fought for your clients up until now? Ugh. Well, that may be true, but, but that's, that's because I believe my clients be innocent from the bottom of my heart. If I were to get on guard and acquittal, that, that isn't a proper defense at all. Fucking hell. I became a lawyer because I thought, I thought I could save people who were suffering and in pain, like you. Literally, the only reason I became a lawyer. But, but when I look at this mess we're in, I can't even protect the people closest to me. Even if I win the case, I still lose in the end. I just don't know what to do. Right, would you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes. We're only human, you and I. You want to save someone? That's something easier said than done, wouldn't you say? That's... You're a defense attorney. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. That's all you can do. People like you and Francisca von Karma are always using all you have to pin me down. You fight to the very end even when you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict for a man I clearly know to be guilty. 
Francisca. She fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is her perfect win record that literally does not exist anymore because of you. That's all. And? Isn't that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious win record was destroyed? You're so petty! I see. Now I understand why you despise me so. However, you're mistaken. But you, thanks to you, when you sealed off my path to a perfect win record, I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. What? I don't believe you. Are you saying that is why you left the prosecutor's office? But then, why? Why are you here now? The answer to that is something you will find out on your own. I have faith you will see it through before the verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, then you'll be powerless to change the ending of this story. That's right, the game is gone. I'm talking to you now, people. Audience, player, streamer who is constantly getting voices wrong. Ship up. Get to the true ending. Beep, beep, beep. Mr. Nick, the transceiver. Beep. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Now then, Mr. Attorney, do you wager you can obtain an acquittal tomorrow? My, my. What is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. Tell me. Please. Why are you holding Maya hostage for Mr. On Guard's sake? Why are you- why are you doing this for that cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't misunderstand things. He is my client. Don't toy with me! The man who hires an assassin is just as much of a killer himself. I believe you are asking me for a reason as to why I am doing what I am. Yeah? This is what I like to call my aftercare. What the heck is aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity, Mr. Attorney. I take great care to, to ensure that no suspicion falls upon the clients, my clients, for my handiwork. That is what is called client relations and is a part of an assassin's duty. An assassin's duty? We were unlucky this time, and my client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I had to do to enlist your expert help, Mr. Attorney, and to assure, ensure that you would do everything in your power to the very end. What is your name? I believe I told you once before. However, you did. B My name is the Killer. Shelly the Killer. You're Shelly the Killer? Please keep in mind, you do not have much space to maneuver with me. As a the Killer, I always finish what I set out to do. If you fail to keep up your end of the bargain, Maya! It would be my duty as an assassin to see to it that she receives a nice long nap. Ah, no! Now then, if you'll excuse me. I'm sorry I don't have much commentary for this. I'm getting so into this voice acting, and it's hard to get a word in edgewise with myself. If someone were to trace this signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. Meow? This is my, uh... I... I don't know what to say. Edgeworth! Hmm? Did you hear that? At the end of that transmission. Phoenix, you lucky dog. Hmm? Oh, that. It sounded like a cat. A cat? It can't be that cat, can it? What is it? I think I know where Shelly the Killer is holding Maya hostage. Edgeworth, have all police units head for On Guard Mansion immediately. All right, you hurry over as well, then. Oh, shit's kicking up. Don't lose hope yet, Pearls. The fight has only just begun. Yeah. Okay, to the lobby, and then to the place, even though they're entirely separate buildings. And then the high-paced music starts again. Why is that bear there? Maya! Please answer us, Mystic Maya! We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. Assuming he's still in the area. I can't believe it. That butler, all this time he was to kill her. He and Angad were working together all this time. I'm sure they had worked out a contingency plan ahead of time. It's a figurine of a bear! There are a lot of cuts in it for some reason. Wooden bear-shaped figurine. It's covered in many thin cuts. A bear? Isn't that more of a thing for Mr. Corrida? Why would something like this be here? Right. Look down. Look down. There's a little pet door installed here. Ah, I'm sure that's for Shu. Do you 
think that this came through that little door? This door! It's locked! Well, I'm pretty used to breaking doors down by now. Let's go, Edgeworth! Boom! Real-time editing! This is the police! Open up! Oh, shit. Ah, oh, there's no one here! From the looks of this room, I would say this is on guard's private lounge. Look at this, right? An antenna for sending and receiving radio signals and a VCR. Check inside the deck. There's a tape. It would be an important piece of evidence. If we're lucky, it'll have the moment the crime was committed recorded on it. I'm sorry, but the tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. No! There's no mistake that someone used this to record something. It looks like something that someone took the tape we're looking for and escaped with it. Aha! Hmm? We've searched all over, but it looks like he got away. I'm sorry. It looks like he slipped out of our grasp this time. And now, we've lost our only lead. Don't give up yet. That little girl is looking to you to be her pillar. Yeah, you're right. We're close. I can tell. We've already set up checkpoints lead along every route leading out of this district. Leave the rest to us. Maya. The hell? This looks like a picture of Miss Impax. With love, Celeste. Miss Impax? You mean... Yes, Mr. Cord is former manager. Why would a picture of Ms. Impax be here in Mr. Ongard's mansion? And why does it say with love? Hmm, this might be a clue. Huh? Ah! What's wrong, Pearls? Please, let me see that picture frame. Huh? What's so special about the frame? On the back! There's something written on the back of the frame! Maya! It's Mystic Maya! She left us a message! What? With what? And how? Maya! I thought you'd come. I knew you would. Now listen up. You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you. Ever! I'm fine, so you don't need to worry. There's so much I want to write, but I don't think I have a lot of time left. Apparently you're there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Someone's gotta watch out for the helpless lunk. Um, that's it for now. Oh, no. I... Damn, auto skip. That's. I. No. Mystic Maya. Right! What's wrong? Why the blank stare? Oh, um. Nothing. We've searched the house, and this is the last room. It looks like he eluded us. Edgeworth. Yes? As far as clues go, I think this is about all I'm going to get. But I'm still short on one last thing. And what is that? Adrian. Miss Andrews' psych lock. If I could just find out what secret she's holding, then I think I stand a chance in court tomorrow. To blow this case wide open and expose the truth. I think I know what you're thinking. I'll contact the detention center. Um, thanks, Edgeworth. Well, let's go, Pearls. It's time to open that last lock. Sorry, Adrian. Good evening, Mr. Wright. Ignore the window, that's purely daylight outside. What's wrong? You look ill. Miss Andrews, I have come to remove your psych lock. The fuck does that mean? Psych lock? Are you okay? How long have you been awake? Have you slept this entire time, sir? You... Are you good? I want to know, and you will tell me. Your secret. Fine. Go ahead. Try to break me if you can. Last piece of the puzzle. <sighs> Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. Ongard for the murder? I've already told you countless times. It's because I thought Matt was the killer. No, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. Ongard. Ms. Andrews, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said something earlier. You said revenge. And so you're saying I was taking my revenge out on Matt, and that's why? What an absurd idea. I don't have anything I would want to take revenge for. Miss Andrews, a woman who lives by being dependent on other people. There's something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. Celeste. Take that! Celeste. There's only one catalyst that could cause such strong feelings, and even revenge. 
And that is Miss Impact's suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who hit her suicide note was also Juan. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned him. Yet. But for you to hate Mr. On Guard would mean that he must have, have had some relation to Miss Impact's and her suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Matt? Bullseye. This. This is a photo of Miss Impacts, correct? She looks younger than when she passed away, though. <sighs> With love, Celeste. This is Miss Impacts' handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? No, that's all right. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah, it is. I found this at Mr. Ongard's mansion. And after all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. It even tops us off for a full bar for the next trial. Why? Celeste, she was supposed to get married to Juan. Yes, but I heard that it didn't work out. Because Mr. Corda didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes, because of Matt. Because of Mr. Ongard? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Celeste, she was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world at the time. I was working part-time back then, and I often saw the two of them together. So that's why, with love, Celeste is written on the frame of that picture. They were a couple, weren't they? It wasn't anything as splendid as that. Celeste was being used. Toyed with, until she was thrown away. That's so horrible! That's entire image is built up around how nice and wonderful of a man he is. A scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to Worldwide Studios. And that is where she met Juan. She seemed really happy with, with him. Even happier than when she was with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good match that they were even planning to get married. And then, it was suddenly called off. On, that, on the night Juan called their marriage off, Celeste, she killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt. It was revenge for Celeste and for myself. I'm sure even you can guess why Juan called the wedding off, right? Matt confessed to Juan. That was a relationship with Celeste. I see. So that's what happened. But... Then why did Mr. Corda have to call off the wedding? I don't understand at all. It was probably because of his worthless male pride. Juan and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for when it would hurt Juan the most. Poor Miss Impax. Yeah, Juan's not exactly in the clear for this either. That's some bullshit. That wasn't the end of it. That day, I'm almost certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind. And in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds and... So that she would never again be hurt by Matt, she chose to die. And when Juan discovered her body, he hit her note. Why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realized that note was a powerful weapon against Matt. It would be especially damaging to his refreshing like a spring breeze image. In any case, with his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge. There's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of that suicide note. At a time that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was at the press conference after the stage show. I know all about it, as I heard it all from Juan. It was so I could find out about all this that I drew close to Juan to begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That night when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murderer was Matt. Those two were always spying on one another, after all. As for me, I was frankly searching for Celeste's suicide note. 
I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was going to burn it. It even brought a lighter. But I couldn't find the suicide note. And that's when revenge crossed my mind. Yes, I was going to bring to them my own kind of cruel revenge. Celeste Weiss was killed by those two monsters. So when I stabbed Juan's body with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. And that's all I have to say. Are you happy, Phoenix Wright? God, Nick, you're, you're kind of an ass, too. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help that man? I... I'm a lawyer. I see. What a foul profession. Thank you very much for your time and for talking with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. I can't sleep either. Not with my situation. Or with what I know now. Alright, chat. That is going to be it for today. I am wiped. Ooh. Ugh, I'm all shaky. With that being said, let's go find you guys someone to raid, shall we? Let's see. Truly, really there's someone else doing the Ace Attorney trilogy. This game always has someone doing it. It's hard not to. It's a very fun series. It deserves all the love it gets. Hmm. Ooh, okay. Someone's on the game ahead of us. Seems like they're having fun. Oh, that's a name, though. Kingdom Key Master 114. I take it that's a Kingdom Hearts fan. <laughs> Alright, chat. Make sure to be nice and supportive for them. Because everyone on this site is doing their best. Oh, my spine. <sighs> Next few days I'll be taking off, and we will be back, hopefully finishing Octopath on Saturday. That stream might run either a little long or a little short, depending on how much grinding I can get done into my downtime. Until then, you all take care, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye!